shout out TTM Academy. All right, we got Zone 3 in the house. And uh, yeah, so shout out to everybody. Shout out to TTM Academy. So this is a, a whole summer's worth of research. All right, so this lecture today is basically about uh, blackface, the very, very, you know, sociopathic and even sometimes psychopathic tradition, ritual of white supremacy called blackface. And, you know, you see the articles on, on, you know, you see a blog here, you see a news article there, but you never see everything all together. All right, I'm gonna put this in the thing. Like you see something over here, you see something over there, but you never see everything compiled all together. So what I did was I went through and compiled all the celebrity blackface um, that's that's happened over the past, you know, 100 years. And this is just the top celebrity blackface. Like I, I, I'm saving the black and white stuff for another lecture. So this lecture is going to be focusing on the people in the color era. There's going to be black and white people in this. So this is going to be the top 100. This is the top 100 blackface, celebrity blackface. This has never been seen anywhere in the world. You know, you've seen, there's a million articles, but I've pieced all the articles together. I took screenshots of everything. I found the net worth of each of these people. So this isn't just a expose. This is also a statistical analysis of net income as it relates to blackface. So let's get it started. So this first person on the list, so this is the top 100 blackface, top 100 celebrity public figure back blackface. So this, these are celebrities and public figures, you know, be they world leaders, senators, things like that, people that have done blackface, all right? So, um, and this was a, a whole summer's worth of work, the past maybe this whole COVID summer, I've been compiling this work. And uh, I've been, you know, and to my friends on Facebook, I've been showing, you know, little tidbits here and there. And uh, so this is uh, the culmination of, of this whole summer's worth of research. And uh, so we're about to start right now. And so this is the top 100 celebrity blackface, the top 100 um, celebrities and public figures. All right, so let's start this up. All right, so number one on the list, we have Sarah Silverman, right? So anybody that knows uh, Sarah Silverman or has heard of her, you know, she's a comedian, you know, I don't think she's funny, but yeah, blackface is, you know, it's really messed up, you know, because blackface is a ritual that's, that's been going on for, 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 for at least, you know, over a century. And it's a way of uh, ridiculing black people, right? So here we ha have her, have Sarah Silverman right here. She's clearly ridiculing black people. She's got, you know, the, the black face and the, the white lips and the 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 the, uh, the Aunt Jemima scarf. Oh, yeah. Shout out to, to Tyrone. Shout out to uh, Middle Stam Stamina in the house. Oh, my God, Eugene. I am so sorry. You were right. It's so much harder to be black than it is to be Jewish. I'd kill myself if I were black. That should do it. You're good to go. The beautiful Queen Latifah. Expected. All right. Oh. Um, Hitler, thank you so much for stopping by tonight. And my but yeah, so she's got the the, the 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 typical blackface, right? The classic blackface going, and you know she did this years ago, and she was invited to the Democratic National Convention. So it's like that should have you know people should have known right there. Hillary's Democratic National Convention um, four years ago. Uh, Sarah Silverman was one of the speakers. So it's like. You know, you know your whole system is uh, compromised when you have people that wear blackface being accepted into the Democratic National Convention. So she wasn't canceled. You know, it's like, obviously, you know, if she had done this after the convention, that would have been different. But the fact that she wore blackface and they they knew it, it's like you just type Sarah Silverman. This comes up, you know, uh, this is number one uh, on my list. So, you know, I did this list organically. There's There's no fashion... Um, or, or a real way that I did the list. I just kind of searched the internet and the most popular things that were coming up. So a lot of these people are the most popular ones to start. So that's number one on the list. We got Sarah Silverman, all right? Sarah Silverman is number one, all right? Now we're at number two. Number two is Jimmy Fallon. Oh, but let's talk about how much she's worth. So you see that she's worth 12 million right here. And that's a very, very important note, all right? The fact that she's worth 12 million you know, just shows that this didn't hurt her career. You know, you would think like, oh, let's see, you think that, oh, maybe this would destroy her career or something, but no, I, it clearly hasn't. So, you know, 
And uh, so, let, yeah, let's go to the next one. We got Jimmy Fallon. All right. So he's coming in at number two. Right. Jimmy Fallon's number two on this list. And, um, you know, he's um, also, you know, people know the roots and, and uh, the roots have been silent on this issue. Jimmy Fallon actually just came out this summer. Um, you know, this this summer, Jimmy Fallon just came out and said he apologizes, this and that. But the roots still haven't come out and said anything. Black Thought hasn't said anything, you know, uh, Quest Love hasn't said anything. So in my book, the whole roots, you know, I, I, they're, they're, the roots are, are dead to me. Like the roots have totally lost all their cool points. They're, they've totally gone, you know, shuck, jive, sambo. Because the thing is that when your boss, when your boss is ridiculing black people, you know, this is serious stuff. This is a ritual. This is a, um, you know, a sociopathic ritual. Um, called blackface. That's that's a tradition of Caucasian people all around the world. Um, if you go to you, you know, um, in another lecture, we'll focus on the origins of it. But this lecture, we're just going to focus on the color era and people that are doing it in the color era. We'll we'll, we'll do a, a couple of people that were crossover black and white color era, like Fred Astaire and George Burns and you know people like that. But so we're going to go. So this is top. This is top one hundred. All right. So Jimmy Fallon's number two. On the list, right? Look, look what he's worth. Seventy million. He's worth seventy million. So obviously, blackface hasn't hurt him. And you're going to see that through this list that you're going to see that a lot of these people, everybody's millionaires on this list. And I didn't single out millionaires. It just turned out that way. You know, statistically, from a mathematic tip, this is an infographic chart. Everybody that happened to do blackface, almost ninety over ninety percent of them are all multi millionaires. So it makes you think, like, hmm. If if most of the people on this list are are multimillionaires, that means that either blackface is propelling them to multimillionaire status, or um, they they've become millionaires and blackface has helped them uh, go even farther and become multi multimillionaires. Like some, something fishy is definitely going on. So let's look at this. Let's go back. All right. So that's Jimmy Fallon. I never watched his show. I don't watch TV. I, I just watch the internet and Netflix and you know stuff like that. But uh, I, I, so I don't even, you know, know know what his uh, show is like. But I know that he's uh, a racist, you know, because because the thing about this chart is that I made this chart so that you know we can prove that these people are racist. It's like, you know, if somebody makes a statement, you know, you can debate it. But this stuff is like not debatable. It's like, okay, yeah, they got blackface on their racist, you know. All right, yeah, exactly. Doesn't so yeah, middle stamina is saying blackface doesn't destroy your career. It 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 only it only. It's only become cancel culture a few years ago. Exactly. Yeah, the cancel culture is new. Exactly. And and before that, you know, it, it was helping people. Chris Rock, now we're talking. Where is he? Man, oh man, read this book. <laughs> I see who wants to be a millionaire, and guess what? Not a lot of black folks on the show. Right? <laughs> Not a lot of black folks on the show. You know why? Because black folks don't like to answer questions. Oh, they want to be millionaires? You got to ask that kind of question. Like, in 1981, how many kinds of crack did Rick James smoke when he recorded Super Freak? <laughs> You think the only way to get a brother on the show is to name it? Who wants fifty dollars cash and a pair of pumas? <laughs> Chris, Chris, you're, you're terrific. Would you would you consider teaming up with me? Well, you, you kidding? I ain't waking up at seven a.m. to fake laugh at some cruise ship stories. What the hell? Are you sure? Yeah, and that's my final answer. You know, now people are starting to get ashamed of it a little bit. All right, so number three in the list, we got Jimmy Kimmel coming clocking in at thirty-five million. Right, so half of what Jimmy Fallon has. But, you know, we see that, uh, you know, that there's a there's a trend developing here. Right. So you see he's uh, mocking like Carl Malone. I think that's supposed to be I think Jimmy Fallon was supposed to be mocking. Uh, uh, I think this is supposed to be Chris Rock, you know, and I think that he's supposed to be maybe uh, mocking Oprah or somebody here. I'm not sure, but it's a black woman. You know, he's making fun of um, um, obese black women. You know, obesity is a, a epidemic in the black community. Um, especially, you know, in, in the United States, um, you know, uh, a large majority of, of uh, the women in my family are, are dealing with with weight issues and things like that. So so people, um, you know, making fun of, of black women dealing with weight issues is even even more sick. So these people are sick. You know, these are sick people. My body is my temple. My time's got every morning with a blissful aerobic workout. But I can't do it alone. Workouts are easy when you have a partner. My workout partner is my maid, Marguerite. Marguerite's soft brown stomach protects my knees and ankles from unnecessary wear and tear. Nothing much longer, Miss Oprah, okay? Ah! Everything shut up in Spanish. 15 minutes a day is all you need to get your heart rate up to it. Please, Miss Oprah, you're crushing my... Oh! Sorry, Miss Oprah. Remember, ladies, strong mind, strong body. I'm Oprah Jimfrey. 
Tonight, Cole won't talk about movie price. Seems like movie price go up and up and up and don't never once go down. Moving now, eight dollars, eight fifty, sometimes ten dollars in places like New York. And here's Cole's whole thing: Who the hell these movies think they are charging all that? Cole went to go see a movie called Handball, starring Anthony Hopkins. Now, Cole loves sport movies, but ain't nobody played no handball at all in whole damn movie. Just old white dude eating brain out of other white dude head. What the hell is that? See, that's Cole's whole thing. If you want to spend eight fifty to see Handball, might as well spend another seventy-five dollars to Cole play basketball. He ain't eat no brain. That's for whole hell of shorts. That's just what they call brain food for you to think about next time you go to theater. You get that right there, brain food, just like that handball. Oh, that's good. Until next time, see you at the movies. Don't think too much. Just here, Cole. The marvelous and transcendent poet Maya Angelou once wrote, A day without pleasure is like a day without sunshine. When Oprah read those words, she went right out and bought this. Handheld shoulder massager. <laughs> when Oprah gets tense, she gets it back here. And here. And here. And sometimes down here. Lately, Cole Malone laying up awake at night thinking about Chinese people. They definitely up to something, that's for dang sure, because why in hell else he moved all the way from China to open up a dry and clean store? Nobody wears a suit in China? Come on now, Cole Malone have to raise a big old eyebrow to that right there. Chinese people with them little heads and feet, smile all the time, pass out free cooking with word in it to Cole Malone after he eat. Don't think y'all can fool Cole Malone no cooking. Cole Malone love cooking, that's true, but he don't need no magic word inside his cooking food. Come on, don't know what you Chinese up to, but tell you what, he gonna find out. And when he do, look out for big old elbow coming your way. And that, you can put on in your fortune cookie and eat. Chinese. Until next time, this year, come along. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas time, everybody. Santa Claus, help go get Santa Claus some kids. Okay, there. Oh, look at this here kid right here. This is a sporty little kid right here. In his sporty socks and sporty stuff. And what's your name, little boy? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, oh, Jesus. You know how they pronounce that name in English? It's Jesus. And you know who birthday on Christmas? That's Jesus time right there. And little baby Jesus wrapped in a manger, all swapping up in all kind of clothes, and the chickens and the mules all coming two by two on the ark to visit him. That was a good old story right there, right? Oh, that's another good. What basketball team you like the best? Um, Wait, okay, Elf, get this right here. No mic, no doubt for you. Dang, later. And what can Santa Claus bring you for Christmas time? Uh, PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2? That's, now, what's the difference between PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2? You don't know. Okay, Santa Claus will bring PlayStation 1. That's cheaper. Okay. Uh, little girl, what the heck is that arm shirt right there? Oh, Santa Claus, you don't know what the heck these parents are saying. Don't let your door, okay? Now, what would you like for Christmas? Uh, a hamster? Oh, hamster. Now, yeah, that's a weird gift to life because Cole Malone have dirty clothes too, and they throw them in a the hamster, and then they carry them off the laundry mat. But if that's what you want, that'll be a good gift for you. Put all your stinking socks and all that stinking stuff in there, and then mommy do the wash, right? Come over here. Oh, what's happening right here? And what's your name, little girl? Name's Marie. And what would you like for Christmas this year? Well, I was hoping I could get a horse. A horse? Yeah. A horse? But put the bounce up and down like that on? Is that true? And the horse keeps on trying and bouncing all over the place like so? Yeah. Well, Santa Claus don't know if you horse, but if you wait here about 30 more seconds, he's gonna give you some illegitimate kids. Okay? Oh, okay. Yep, it's done. Okay. Yep, it's all good. Merry ho ho ho, everybody. Merry Christmas time. Okay, get the hell off there. Sometime at night, Cole Malone look up at sky and say, what the hell going on up there? Do you have live on another planet, phone home like E.T.? Cole Malone read on TV about white people getting deducted by aliens, sticking all kind of hell up their butt, and that's a damn thing. Now, Cole Malone never seen no flying saucer himself, but if he do, that's going to be a spooky time. That's why Cole Malone say, government got to step up and give 102% to keeping them little green man off this here earth, because the day them dudes stick something up Cole Malone butt, that's going to, well, that ain't going to be no good time for nobody, especially Cole Malone butt. Listen up, E.T., you better stay the hell back. Nanu, nanu. Until next time, this here, Cole Malone. Hello everybody out there TV town. This is Carl Malone of the Utah Jazz here to tell you about Carl Malone home state, Louisiana. Louisiana, that's a good state. State bird, brown pelican. State bug, honeybee. All kinds of celebrity from Louisiana. Britain. Well, that right there it is. Carl Malone home state, Louisiana and New Orleans. Crazy town, USA. If you look to take family trip with kids, maybe show them kids with some big old boobies look like sticking out. Or just maybe you rather relax and she wants some bubble gumbo and squirrel pie. Louisiana, a heck of a good place to visit. The big easy. Come on now. Carl Malone waiting on you. All right, so we, so we're at number three. Jimmy Fall I mean Jimmy Kimball's number three. I don't I don't watch his show either. Um, and in fact, I didn't even know the, the difference between Jimmy Fallon's and Jimmy Killen, Kimmel's show. Like, I didn't even know if the roots were on Jimmy Fallon's or if they're on Jimmy Kimmel's because they're both named Jimmy. And that's also interesting, too, the, the, the phallic undertones of them both being named Jimmy and them both being like the top kind of uh, night show kind of people. I mean, you know, given there's, you know, Conan and other people like that, but they're like the two tops, you know. And and uh, so we'll get into Johnny Carson too because you know Johnny Carson actually passed down the the um, the throne from Johnny Carson to Jay Leno when Arsenio was taken over. You know, and you notice they canceled Arsenio even though he was he was the most popular thing ever. All right, so now we're at number four. Low connection. All right, there we go. Connection available. Number four, we got Robert Downey Jr. All right, now Robert Downey Jr. clocking in at three hundred million. 300 million so he did blackface and he was still and it didn't hurt his career it was able to help his career and since he did blackface he's become even more richer all these people have become more richer since blackface we're at number four that's robert downey jr 300 million people know this guy as iron man 
all right? And he's taking part of this uh, international um, white supremacy ritual called blackface, right? All right. Now we're going to go to, I guess we're at number four, right? This is one, two, three, four. Robert Downey, J Robert Downey Jr. is number four. Everybody knows you never go full retarded. What do you mean? Check it out. Dustin Hoffman, Rayman, look retarded, act retarded. Not retarded. Got two picks, cheated cards. Autistic. Sure. Not retarded. You got Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. So, yes, retarded maybe. Braces on his lid. But he trying to pants off next to him in a ping pong competition. That ain't retarded. He was a goddamn war hero. Right. You know any retarded war heroes? You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. For now we're getting to number five, Ted Danson. Ted Danson's number five. All right. And you can see he's worth 80 million. That's a lot of money, right? All these people are worth a lot of money, right? It's not like these are hundred thousand heirs doing this, right? I think the people, the hundred thousand heirs might be afraid. All right. So that's 80 million. All right. Ted Danson. And this was actually at Whoopi Goldberg's, uh, uh, a roast of Whoopi Goldberg. So he actually wore blackface to a woman he was dating at the time. I believe he was dating Whoopi Goldberg, um, which is even more heinous, you know. And uh, and yeah, she cooned out on that one for for not, you know, getting mad at him. If I had shown up to that, you know, if if I was if I was dating somebody and I showed up to an event and they were in blackface, I would uh, immediately, you know, stop dating that person. But Whoopi, I think, continued to date him. All right, so we're going to flip back. All right, so that's number five. All right, now we're at number six, Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple, everybody loves Shirley Temple. All right, and let me say a little bit about Ted Danson, too. People know him from Cheers, Top Icons, and they use this. They use this form of ridicule to, you know, psychologically place black people in, a, in a, an inferior cast. You know, it's a caste system, right? So we got Ted dancing here, right? And now we get now we're getting into Shirley Temple, right? So I believe this was he was number four. This is number five. So I guess he's number six is Shirley Temple, right? And she's an old school, uh, famous actress. People know her from her, you know, tap dancing stuff with Bojangles and things like that. So this is Shirley Temple, right? She's got the scarf, classic scarf, you know, very uh, a black th thing that black people wear. All right, all right. So next on the list. All right, so 30, she was worth thirty million when she passed away, so you know, and she, you know, she was a child actor. Obviously, you know, um, it's not her fault that they made her, you know, wear this stuff. But you know, as she grew up, she definitely, you know, she didn't, she would, she wasn't ashamed of it. You know, she was uh, cool with it. You know, because it's part of the culture, right? All right, so next on the list we got Virginia Woolf. All right, Virginia Woolf, um, a famous uh, writer. And this is an interesting story. She wore blackface um, with a group of other people. I don't have everybody in the photo. Um, and also, if you want to buy this list, you can. Uh, um, I'll have links to um, where you can send PayPal donations. You can send it to lovetechnologies at gmail.com. And that's love spelled L-U-V. All right. And yeah, and you can just send us 20 bucks and we'll send you the, the this whole chart and the future ones. So this is like a top 100. All right, so we got Virginia Woolf right here, and she was at the time of her death, she was worth 116 million. That's a lot for back then, or maybe they, they probably adjusted it for now. But uh, yeah, so the, uh, I did a lot of research on this, you know, um, finding everybody's net worths. So we can see so far it's all multimillionaires doing this. Now, when she wore this blackface, she was actually impersonating somebody. There, um, they were in um, her and some of her friends were impersonating. Um, I believe uh, some like um, Ethiopian diplomats. They were faking like they're Ethiopian diplomats, and they were and they were wearing uh, head wraps and and she was actually in drag, you know. So this is a uh, Virginia Woolf acting like she's a black Ethiopian man, right? So Virginia Woolf is probably you know very uh, lauded in you know English courses all across the United States. I'm sure parts of Europe too as well, but you know. She's clearly a racist, right? This is a list of racist people. Now, Joni Mitchell. We got Joni Mitchell here. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people look at Joni Mitchell like, hey, you know, Joni Mitchell, you know, she's a, um, you know, she's a, a folk singer. And, you know, uh, you know, why would she do something like that? But, yeah, she went through a phase where she was uh, toying with blackface, right? So she's And she's in drag as well, right? So you can see her here with her. Uh, she might have had a name for this alter ego, 
I forget what this this you know this this alter ego might have actually had a name, right? So this is Joni Mitchell. Everybody thinks like, oh yeah, she's you know harmless, all the folk stuff, you know. Oh Woodstock, people weren't racist at Woodstock, but yes they were. Woodstock was racist. All these people were racist, you know. People were uh, you know, telling Jimmy to burn his guitar. All right. Now we get to Tom Hanks. All right. So we can see she's worth a hundred million. So so far everybody's worth over a couple of million, right? 35 million, That's a, this is a lot of money, right? All these people, this is a lot, a lot of money. They're worth a lot, a lot of money. So these people have a very, very big impact in our world, right? The more money you have, the more potential um, impact. But yeah, Tom Hanks, uh, yeah, Tom Hanks, uh, you know, he actually performed, uh, he didn't put the blackface on himself, but he was at a fundraiser and this guy with the Afro, wig and blackface gets up with him and starts like you know hanging out with him and you know if i were there if i were at a show and somebody if i was on stage you know and i was hosting a show and somebody steps up on the sh on the stage and they're in blackface i'd be like get off the stage you know I'd, or i would i would step off the stage you know either way like i would step off the stage or try to get the person off the stage or you would think he would have some type of security he's He's worth four hundred million dollars, you know. I'm sure at the time he wasn't worth four hundred million, but still, you would think he has some type of security or whatever. So he's complicit in this blackface because he actually performed with this guy. You know, if you're performing with somebody in blackface, you're part of it. You know, he can't distance himself from this because, you know, he could have stepped off the stage. He could have said like, "Hey, who are you, jerk? Get out, get off, get out of here," or whatever. You know, but he didn't. All right. So that's Tom Hanks. Everybody loves Tom Hanks. They know him from Big. This is the prize of the auction. Beauty and Grace, no hassle. What you're going to get is 5,000 shares of soon to be IPO Chorus Pharma Series C. Oh, I know, Now listen. These are the jokes. As an actor, I'm going to say one more line, one more time. 5,000 shares of soon to be IPO. People out there that are foaming over this guy being a 5,000 IPO Chorus Plasma Series C. Preferred stocks and bonds. Remember, see, remember, see, I'm he handled the E.D. Amin accounts back in the 80s. Wow, which was good. Oh, man. Yeah. And this is no, no. Back in the 80s. Wow, which was good. Oh, man. And this is no, no. You know, it's not as well as they did. So, so when you get here, Jamie, Jamie, the meeting starts at, at 10,000 bucks. The meeting starts at 10,000 bucks. What do you get? You get it. What do you get? $10,000. Like, you know, the gross national product. 10,000 bucks. That's two bucks a share. See how boring money management and stock investment is. It's not nearly as much fun as like professional basketball. So all the people you love are on this list. That means that a lot of us are going through what's called uh, Stockholm syndrome, and Stockholm syndrome is when you, um, you know, when you uh, care about your captors or you care about your oppressors or you know you uh, have love for your uh, the people that are that are harming you or oppressing you. So usually it's for the case of kidnappers or somebody's kidnapping you, but. If it's somebody that's like, hey, this is my, the friendly person that I look at every night on TV and they're, they're my friend, you know, they make me happy, they make me and my family laugh, you know, that's called, this is, uh, you know, Stockholm Syndrome, right? Okay, supporting these people, Stockholm Syndrome. Now we're going to go to Christopher Howell, all right? And Christopher Howell's worth about $4 million, um, uh, according to the internet, and uh and what's interesting about this film, I remember seeing this film as a kid, James Earl Jones in it. He was in this movie called, uh, um, I believe it was uh, Soul Man, Soul Man. And, you know, I remember seeing it as a kid and I remember thinking like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, um, it got worked out at the end. There's a moral of the story, you know, James Earl Jones comes down in him and, you know, and at the, by the end of the movie, you're like, yeah, that was, that was, uh, you know, that was messed up what he did. He shouldn't have done that. But he's still a good dick guy and he still gets the girl, right? And and his uh the lead actress in the movie was Radon Chung, actually. Low connection. Okay, there we go. So the lead actress in the film was Radon Chung, and what's interesting about that is that he married her. If you look it up on Wikipedia, I'll have the links in the YouTube version of this, and I'll show that they actually got married. After this, she actually married this guy. And I think this this picture it might be from uh, The Outsiders. I think when they converted that book, the famous book, The Outsiders, um, he was one of the, he was a child actor in the actual movie, The Outsiders movie. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, Christopher Howell, you know, you don't really see him that much anymore. 
Um, so he's one of these cases where, you know, maybe blackface didn't help his career, but it did at the time. And I'm sure at the time he thought like, hey, I'm on top of the world, you know, all these producers are going to, you know, help me uh, take my, you know, acting to another level. $53,979. Don't you think you're overreacting? No. Congratulations, Mr. Watson. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best. Some people don't do anything to get into Harvard. It's gonna be great! These are the 80s, man! It's the Cosby decade! For Mark Watson, all it took was a little soul. I'd like to meet my good friend, Kareem Abdul. I'll leave. We got Washington here on a coin toss, so you'll take me on. That's Watson. Right. Sorry, Marcus. Yeah, there may be a problem here. We'll make us a, uh, black, black negro. A black negro? You know, there's something really strange about it, and I don't know what it is. Oh, God, is she beautiful? You gotta believe me. You must have done a great deal more than you fought him for. It's on her way. Don't tell your wife! What's going on? Then we blame him for the color of his skin! Mom, Dad, I'm black. What? No, you're crazy. Mark Watson. Come on now! From the producer of Risky Business. Soul man. Uh, what is it that annoys you and others I've been I've spoken to about? What's the name of that film, uh, Soul Man? Oh. Am I getting into a can of worms or peas? <laughs> I really want to know. Okay, here's for people who don't know about Soul Man. The premise is that you have this rich kid whose father's a millionaire and refuses to pay his way through Harvard Law School, mm -hmm. and it's a black scholarship. So the only way he gets into Harvard Law School is to take a pill that's a suntan pill and put on an Afro wig, and he gets admitted as a black student. Passes himself off as a minority. And uh, it looks phony. <laughs> There's no way in the world to see how Thomas looks black. And it, to me, it's really an attack on affirmative action. And when I was out in L.A. promoting the film, I said that Ray Don Chong's card from the sisterhood should be revoked. And the producer, <laughs> Stephen yeah. Tish, called me up and, and started getting nasty about it, you know, saying, had I seen the film? I said, no, I didn't have to see it. And, I mean, that's the premise of the film. And to me, I don't see why Ray did. I was really surprised that James O. Jones was a, was a, mm. a part of that. That was really surprising. But I you haven't seen it? I'm not going to see it either. Wasn't that like the people who condemn um, Tom but Sawyer? No, not really. I've seen clips oh, okay. of the film. And if the whole premise is that he's passing bla as black, and it's so phony, that means all the black people in the movie are idiots to think that this guy that they could believe that he's black. Yeah. Maybe they cast idiot black people, just I'm trying to be nice to them. I, I, do see, I do see the problem now. Are you, are you saying that nobody could make a film in which a black man, I, I, what I really want to know is, is, are you bothered by the premise or is it that it's executed badly? I think it's a combination of both. They're trying to pass off as, as attack on racism. I really don't see it like that. And well, there's not funny to me. A black man did pass as black. I mean, a white man in, in real life in that, uh, in black like me in that film. Apparently yeah, what well, year was this though? Mm, I mean, well, I think it's time to move on, you know? Ago. Yeah. Forward. Progress. Could, could no, I'm interested in this. Could no white actor play black? Whoopi Goldberg claims she could play white convincingly. Yeah, I believe it. And <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he's worth four million. So notice everybody in this list is worth over a couple of million, which is kind of interesting. It's like, what does that mean? What's the, what are the chances of that? Now we're going to Gene Wilder. A lot of people love Gene Wilder. We all grew up on uh, Willy Wonka. Yep, Willy Wonka did blackface. All your top heroes did blackface. All these people did blackface. So this is Gene Wilder. You know, he's all these people. They had a lot of funny movies, you know, but it just shows that they're part of a ritual and they're part of a, a, a white supremacy organization called uh, colonialism. <laughs> all right. So that's Gene Wilder. That's Willy Wonka, right? You know him as many of you know him as the original Willy Wonka before um, before the new uh, Tim Burton version, right? Where I believe Johnny Depp played uh, Gene Wilder. Ace of Deuce. That's bad, man. Looking good. Now, here, take this radio. When you step out of here, you gotta step out of here like king shit, right? You bad. I put that radio to your ear. That's gonna help cover your face, right? Just move with the rhythm of the music. Move your body with the rhythm of the music. That's all you gotta remember, okay? Let me see you try it. Step to the music. Step to the music. Yeah. Step to the music. Stop. How can you wise got such a tight ass, man? How you gonna walk out of here with a tan face that white walk? Just get into the music. Come on, George. Come on. Loosen up. Listen to the beat. Let your feet move. Now do it. Can't you feel it? The temple's right here. Right in here. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, now try it. Don't you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. Needs work, George. Needs a lot of work. You know that. We practice. Hey man, you gotta practice. Go let it be loose. Listen to the music. Follow the beat. Here, feel it coming up. Feel it. It's coming. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna get the tickets. Okay, I'll be back. Work on it. God, thanks. Come on, man. Get some jive though. Be cool. Shake it like no break. Hey, man. How do I look? You look sharp. I feel sharp. You hear? I feel like around me now. You dig? Honest stuff. Get down. Get down. Feeling good. Feeling fine. Feeling real fine. Yeah, take this little step. Oh, you buddy, get a tight ass. Yeah, get that ass moving. Honest stuff. Come on, macaroni. Get down. I'm the king. Number one, baby. Ba 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 All right, now we're going to get to a very, very famous actor. This is Laurence Olivier, all right, and he's worth 20 million also. So both him and Gene Wilder are both worth 20 million, or were, you know, 
because uh, I believe Lawrence Olivier passed away. And, um, you know, and this is, I believe he's playing Othello, right? He's playing a Moor, right? You know, um, shout out to all the Moors out there. But uh, yeah, so, you know, he is uh, obviously playing a, a bl uh, putting on blackface and, and, you know, this is a, a, a very heinous stereotype. And it's interesting to see the different styles of blackface, right? Like you see Gene Wilder's is a little bit more orangey, right? You know, there's just these different, there's all, the, what's also interesting about this list too is that almost nobody has the same exact style of blackface. Like maybe his lips are a little bit, you know, smaller, I mean, or bigger than somebody else's or whatever, like the, the white lips that they're painting on. Or, everybody's costume is very, very different. All right, so this, so we got Laurence Olivier, all right? So we're now we're gonna go over to the next row, all right? Let's go over to the next row. So we're going down. Now we got some world leaders. So Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Now the scary thing about this part, you know, is that, you know, cause I included the net worths of everybody so they, that you can really see like how much of a financial impact these people have on the world. Cause um, a lot of people get racism confused with, um, with prejudice, you know, and prejudice is like, yeah, you know, th um, this person um, hates that person and that person hates that person. Prejudice is kind of like a relative thing that everybody can partake in, right? It's like somebody doesn't like them because they're overweight. Somebody doesn't like them because they're um, because of their hair. Somebody doesn't like them because of that. That's prejudice. But when people really start talking about racism and structural systematic dynamics, then it, net worth really comes into play because if somebody's worth 50 million and they're um, wearing blackface, you know, the the way that racism trickles down it can have much more of an effect than somebody that doesn't have any money right so that's why i put included these net worth so we could look at it and, I, and i'll graph all these in the future too so we can see the different types of graphs and and stuff like that so let's go back to trudeau so this is justin trudeau leader of uh canada all the people in canada that are like oh you know america's so racist canada's not racist but look this is the the actual head of the country the head of the prime, the prime minister of Canada right now, as I'm speaking, who's worth $10 million, wore blackface multiple times, right? So this is him, uh, you know, in his Moorish garb, you know, making fun of, uh, of uh, turbans and, and feathers and, and wearing blackface. This is him at, a, I believe, at maybe a game or something. I don't know if it was like a sports game. And he's got his blackface on. And then this is him. Maybe he was impersonating Michael Jackson or Prince or something like that. I think like that. It was maybe some college thing or something. And, you know, a lot of colleges all around the world, they're, they're, people are, um, a lot of uh, news journalists are checking the, um, all the old yearbooks because they're finding all this crazy stuff in these old yearbooks, you know. Um, I believe this was taken out of a yearbook, this one. Right. But yeah, this is and and the scary thing about, uh, you know, him being uh, wearing blackface is this guy has nuclear capability. Right. This guy has his finger on a nuclear trigger and, you know, he can actually tell his government to send out nukes to wh whichever country or whatever region. And he could actually nuke somebody or bomb somebody. So the, so somebody wearing blackface and being able to bomb somebody is even worse than just somebody that, you know, like Sarah Silverman, who's at the Democratic National Convention, National Convention, you know, uh, you know, misleading people and, and you know, um, ascertaining, uh, proving that the D Democratic Party is is clearly compromised and is clearly dealing with a bunch of racists that aren't, you know, weeding out who they're choosing to speak at their events. They're, cho they're choosing actual racists and the and you know um, the KKK actually started the um, the Southern KKK helped started the the Southern Democratic Party, right now um, and I'll put the facts to that the link to that you know because everything I'm spitting is facts right. You can have a look. It's pretty grainy. Uh, we wanted to be very sure that this was, in fact, the liberal leader before we made the video public. They did confirm to us last night that we are looking at Justin Trudeau in this video. You can see that he has blackface makeup on. It's covering his face, neck, his arms and hands. And you can see between the tears in his jeans there that he also appears to have the makeup down his legs as well. This, as you mentioned, is the third image of him within about 12 hours that has come out uh, and uh, initially broken by Time magazine. So Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, right? So that's very, very concerning. Now we're going to go to the Virginia governor. Right. This is all stuff that's recently the news. This was like from this year and uh, Governor Ralph Northam. Right. He's worth seven million. Right. Trudeau was worth 10 million. So we see the politicians aren't as rich as uh, the uh, 
you know, the actors generally, but, you know, I have them on this list because this is a celebrity and public figure list, right? And this is just a blackface list, right? Okay. And all right. So yeah, Governor Ralph Northam from Virginia and, you know, um, and he's been, uh, you know, asked to step down. He never stepped down. He's literally here with the KKK person and he's literally um, implementing policies for millions of black people that are living in Virginia right now. So that, so this is proof that we're under a caste system and this is, you know, a form of a colonialism. We have these, um, you know, so, six sociopathic, um, you know, racist actually in office, you know? So we definitely got to vote this guy out, right? So he's not stepping down. And I believe he's a Democrat too, right? And Trudeau is also Democrat as, uh, not a Democrat, but a, you know, so-called progressive or whatever, liberal as well, right? And uh, I believe, yeah, Go Governor Ralph Northam is also a Democrat, right? I mean, a, pro a liberal, a progressive, right? So, boom, now we got Dan Aykroyd. You know, I, I'm, I've always been a big fan of Dac Dan Aykroyd's movies. You know, I grew up in the 80s as a child. And, and you know, so Dan Aykroyd, uh, you know, it was hard for me to, to, to be like, wow, you know, he's a, he's a racist, you know, and, and being able to deal with that, you know? And be able to deal with like, hey, all your my childhood heroes, a lot of them are, if not most of them are racist, you know. And, you know, Eddie Murphy was in this film. So you could say like, oh, yeah, Eddie Murphy co-signs it, you know, it's funny or whatever. But just because something's funny doesn't mean it's racist. It doesn't mean it's not racist, you know. It's like we can we can look at something and be like, oh, yeah, that's funny, right? Um, you know, but just be, something being funny doesn't necessarily mean that it's not hurtful, Right. You know, because if it's like, oh, that person is overweight, ha ha ha, you know, that's, you know, um, attacking overweight people, right? And if it's like, oh, that person is dark skin, ha ha ha, or he's putting that dark skin paint on, then it's, it's you know, not only is it attacking a whole group of people, but it's also, um, it's also solidifying and, and reinforcing, you know, systematic oppression and, and, and other things that aren't happening necessarily if somebody's making fun of an overweight person. Because, you know, there is a oppression of overweight people if you're talking about health care and pills and, you know, you know, general uh, FDA industry kind of stuff where they're targeting people and exploiting them. But, you know, there weren't hundreds of years of laws against, you know, people being overweight and things like that, you know, where in my family, I'm the first um, free generation where I was able to actually go to school with Caucasian, the Caucasian caste, right, the white caste. I was actually able to go to school with them and uh, technically being able to marry a Caucasian caste person. But all my uh, ancestors before that, all my relatives, you know, weren't born with equal rights. So I'm, I'm the first to be born with equal rights. So all the people that are like, oh, racism, all that stuff's in the past. Like, no, nah, I'm the first generation and I'm not that old, you know. All right, so I'm gonna flip back. All right, so yeah, that's Dan Aykroyd worth 135 million. I certainly hope there's enough space on the train for me. Nenge, Nenge Yomboko from Cameroon. Do you remember me? It's Lionel Joseph. Lionel! From the African Education Conference, right? Yes, sorry, man. I was director of cultural events at the Haile Selassie Pavilion. I remember the pavilion. We had big fun there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Next, we've got Mini-Me. Right, the guy that played Mini Me, Vern Troyer, and this this one, well, Dan Aykroyd was in Trading Places. For those who don't know, uh, I don't, I'm not going to know all the names of all these movies for the blackface, but I remember this one. This is Trading Places. This is that scene where you know they're trying to hide from this killer, and so he puts on blackface so that the guy doesn't recognize him, and and uh, he acts like he remembers Eddie Murphy from um, you know from school or something, and and they sing some like fake African song, like some racist thing. And you know, Eddie Murphy co-signed co it. You know, Eddie Murphy was on top at that time, getting paid a lot of money um, in the eighties. So yeah, Vern Troyer, you know, uh, rest in peace. He's probably one of the, the, the poorest people on this whole list. He's only worth 150 K. Everybody else pretty much on this list is pretty much in the multi-millions, you know, 135 million, 7 million, right? It's a lot of money. All right. So, you know, everybody knows. So that's mini me. So, yep. Mini me did blackface. And the film that he's doing this in is uh, a film, uh, Heath Ledger's last film. So Heath Ledger's co-signed blackface. Right. If he's in a film with somebody, he co-signed the blackface. And Johnny Depp is also in this film. So Johnny Depp co-signed the blackface. Right. This is uh, Dr. Parnassius, uh, that, that movie, Dr. Parnassius, um, by uh, the guy that did Baron von uh, Munchausen, Terry Gilliam, 
right? Okay, now this is uh, Sia. People like Sia. And, you know, one of my homies, uh, Belief, actually, uh, you know, he did a lot of production for MERS over the years. Uh, you know, he is uh, one of her core producers and, you know, she's got him, made him rich off of off of her music um me and belief used to make music back in uh back in college when i and uh you know so he went on he went on to produce for sia and blew up and now we can see sia she tries to deny this and like oh i'm not racist this wasn't blackface but yep you see it one of the top she's a very a top top songstress sia wore blackface right and look how much she's worth 30 million all these blackface people are all in the mega millions right except mini me right is very, he's one of the exceptions. He's an outlier, right? And he's also, um, you know, a little person too. So maybe, you know, little people aren't getting paid as much in Hollywood, and that might be something to do with that, right? All right. So yeah. So Sia, Sia did it. Sia's a racist. Sia wore blackface. All you Sia fans, you're supporting a racist, white supremacist. These are all white supremacists, right? All right. Julianne Ho. I'm not sure exactly uh i never watch her stuff you know and i think in this she's trying to be like orange is the new black and she's wearing a prison outfit and orange is the new black is racist in itself you know just how they have the sisters with their eyes bugged out you know that goes to all the actors out there you know if you're bugging your eyes out and stuff like that you know like or orange is the new black that's you know that's sambo coon stuff you know it's, it's, it's very uh you know stereotypical stuff so yeah she's actually reenacting the the actress that plays uh you know the, that has her eyes out and has the bantu knots so these are like some like fake bantu knots i believe right and i think everybody's uh getting on what's her name for wearing bantu knots today but you know people should be aware of what they w wear but the blackface is the problem all right so um yep next we're going to another uh another assembly uh, uh politician assemblyman dav hickend right and uh this guy right here, one to five million. Um, when I first showed parts of this list in like another lecture, somebody came at me being like, oh, you're being racist towards Jewish people. There's so many Jewish people on this, uh, um, you know, on this chart. But I'm just this chart ha is, has nothing to do with religion or anything like that. All it's just showing is people that wear blackface and it and it tends to be, uh, you know, people. Uh, I mean, these are all people of the, the Caucasian diaspora and and. It tends to be, um, you know, the, the three Abrahamic religions on here. But I do have, I am, um, um, this section is just focusing on the USA and people that are popular in the US. But, I, you know, I have the Middle Eastern section, Asian section, Indian section, so international sections as well, too. So outside of the Abrahamic religions, we, we've got other people that are also um, participating in this racial ridicule ritual. Right, so we got Assemblyman Dov Hinkind, and he's worth one to five million, right? Politician, and he's wearing a um, he's, I think this is probably at a Halloween party. Same with her, the Julianne's one. This was probably a Halloween party too, right? We got another politician, state senator Ryan Eugene Gaddy, right? And we don't have his net worth on there because it was probably just so low, you know, um, you know, I couldn't f actually find his net worth, right? So, all right, the next one, Diplo, Wes Pence. Um, and anybody that knows Diplo, you see here, he um, was, was clearly wearing blackface. He's kind of like in the B-boy kind of stance. And, you know, it's easy to write these things off and he can be like, oh, this isn't blackface. This is actually, uh, I was at the beach and I was getting a mud bath and or whatever. But, you know, this is blackface. He's, you know, um, and he's done a lot of other racist stuff, too. Yeah, I'll put some links to that. Some of his other, you know, videos making fun of Puerto Rican people, making fun of Mexican people, making fun of Caribbean people, and he actually created a. Um, he, um, well, a lot of people don't know. Uh, back in back in MySpace days, uh, when Diplo first came out with Major Lazer, I had called him out. You know, because Diplo actually he, he uh, first time I met Diplo, he was a fan of my show at Pianos back in like two thousand three. And it was me and TTC and Tess and Diplo was there because he was with, uh, um, not Ninja Tune, but I guess he was with Big Dada. But no, he was probably with Big Ninja Tune at the time, maybe. And he had released his first album, which was whack. Florida was whack. I know you gave it a good review in Tokyo inside here, but I thought it was totally whack because that was actually his production and it was whack. And then now he's he's been able to get producers and pay people and, and put his money around and he's he's able to figure out how to make 
um, you know, better music. But if you listen to Diplo's first album, it's totally whack. Florida is totally whack. Nobody ever plays it, right? You know, people wouldn't even recognize it. People are like, that's Diplo's music? It's totally, you know, it's, to it's totally whack. But he has some, um, you know, he had some dope people on there. You know, he, he pays some dope lyricists. Like, I believe, like, some Freestyle Fellowship cast are on there. Like, maybe Peace or, or, or so, some other cats are on there. And, and, you know, so he's got some dope cameos. But the actual beats, I mean, are, are whack. Like, his production is whack. But, so, back when he first started Major Lazer, um, you know, I came at him. I was like, yo, you know, that's totally racist. And, you know, you, you've got all these Caribbean, like, you're not, there's no Caribbean people in the band, and meanwhile, you're puppeteering Caribbean music, and, and, and acting like Jamaicans are all mindless, like, animalistic people, like, he's, you know, putting all these stereotypes out there, just like, oh, it's all about daggers and daggers, and, and Jamaicans wilding out and burning their home down and acting crazy, and I was like, so I called him out, and, and he tried to, he tried to get uh, MySpace to delete me back in the day. He tried to like, you know, maybe he called MySpace security or something. I don't know what he did, but, um, you know, but it didn't, it didn't happen. And um, so basically, you know, me and him had beef way, way back then. But it's just funny to see him go from being a total underground cat to being worth 26 million. 26 million, right? 26 million. That's, that's a lot of money, right? You know, I'm sure... You know, all these figures include people's houses and, you know, stuff like that. Um, these are just the general net worth. It doesn't mean that he has 26 million free cash. But, you know, this is... Uh, um, oh, yeah, shout out to Lauren. Shout out to Lauren. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is Diplo. And if you look up Major Laser Racist, I made a documentary um, about the racism of Major Laser about, you know, maybe over a decade ago, a decade and a half ago. All right, and you can find that in the net. All right. Now, um, the Florida Secretary of State, Michael Ertel, right? We don't have his um, actual uh, uh, amount of uh, money on here because, uh, you know, it's actually, you know, it's probably lower than, you know, a couple hundred thousand or something like that. But let me go back to Diplo, actually, because uh, you're talking about uh, Major Laser, Tyrone. Um, yeah, so the the major exactly like this the major laser stuff is definitely more ra more racist than even this photo you're definitely definitely right because um and what's interesting too is that when i called him out years ago about about it was just him and switch right and they were puppeteering caribbean music and it was just him and switch but after i called him out that's when he got the black people in his band so actually a friend of mine trill spice uh melanie mela murder uh not mel murder but mela murder you know, uh, she actually got got hired by him. So if if I hadn't called him out and made that whole documentary and all that stuff about you know him and Switch being racist, you know he kicked Switch out. Uh, then you know he probably wouldn't have added the whole black band. He got the you know the a black college dude uh, from uh, maybe he was a Morehouse cat. Cause I think my homie Fernando went to school with him. You know, he he got he got a bunch of hype men and acting like, hey, this is a Caribbean thing, and I'm just the DJ in the back. So he got smart. He knew that he was you know puppeteering, and I'll show also pictures of him putting. Uh, he had black women on stage before he added black people in his band. He had black women on stage as an accessory. He had, he would have them stand on over his mixer or his turntables and do a split with a bottle of Hennessy on the on the turntables, and they're doing a split next to the bottle of Hennessy like. You know, just totally exploiting black women, right? You know, so that so we see his true colors, and now you know he's going into his country country phase, right? Now that he's uh, made his money from from uh, hip hop and exploiting black people, now he's uh, you know going on to the next. Um, and also too, um, I'm not sure if Roxy's in the house. Uh, Roxy Cottontail, she was one of his original man managers when it was him and Low Budget. And a funny thing too is when when Diplo came at me. He was like, "Oh, you look like a, you're like a low budget Sun Ra, or something like that." And I was like, "I thought low budget was your homie." <laughs> I got I got him on some. This was like MySpace, you know, back and forth back in the day, right? Um, he was like, you know, saying something about that, saying something about me or whatever. But uh, um, so yeah, now we're gonna go back to the next one. So this is uh, Representative Anthony Sabatini. We don't have his net worth because. Just like Florida State Secretary Michael Ertel, his net worth is very low. So, you know, if it's under like a couple hundred thousand, I didn't put it down. Right. Then we got Cindy Lauper. Everybody loves Cindy Lauper. You know, she's a um, 80s superstar. You know, when I think of Goonies, you know, I think of her. 
Um, you know, and uh, she actually looks kind of attractive right here. She, I think she looks actually better than uh, she normally looks. But, uh, you know, um, what's interesting about this is that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, people think like, oh, she's like, must be punk rock and she's anti, you know, she must be anti-racism or whatever. But clearly she's not, you know, she did it. She did the blackface, you know, she's part of the club and look how much she's worth. 30 million. That's a lot of money. Most singers today are not worth 30 million. You know, most singers are, are struggling, even ones that had hits, you know. So this is just showing that everybody that's done blackface, they're good. Now, maybe they were good before they did the blackface or the black. I don't know if the blackface reinforced that, but there's some correlation. There's a very strong correlation. We got 30 million, right? 20 million, 20 million, 400 million. There's a there's a very strong correlation with with blackface and people be, being mega millionaires, right? And Billy Crystal, right? So Billy Crystal, I think he's doing Sammy Davis right here. He's acting like Sammy Davis, right? And, uh, you know, Billy Crystal, you know, people know him from all types of movies, worth 50 million. And he's another one of the icons, like Billy Crystal, all these 80s icons that, you know, they all did it, right? Uh, Tom Hanks, you know, all the, all the top 80s people, they went there, they did the blackface, right? Now we're gonna flip over. All right. Now we're going down. Now we're. Um, I'm gonna. You know, I'll do documentaries, um, individual lectures about a lot of these people too. Like Die Antwerp, I'll be doing. A, um, you know, a documentary on them. So let's talk about Die Antwerp. This is Yolandi Visser, and her real name is Henri Du Toit, I guess, or Toy. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But uh, you know, so she's worth ten million dollars. And her husband is also worth ten million dollars, right? Ninja Watkin Tudor Jones, right? And they also had got their um, their daughter to wear blackface, but she's a minor, and they had her with her shirt off. So I'm not even gonna, you know, I didn't put that in this chart, you know. And you know, which is sickening to have their daughter, you know, they put their daughter in blackface too, just like, you know, we were looking at the Shirley Temple thing. All right, and the, the thing about Diane Word is that um, that the scary, scary part about Diane Word and the fact that they're the biggest African rap group. You know, they're the big, I mean, really, they're the biggest rap group outside of the U.S. They're bigger than any, they're probably bigger than any rap group in Europe. They're bigger than any rap group in Africa. They're bigger than any rap group in Asia, not counting like K-pop, I mean, or J-pop rapping or whatever, you know, stuff like that, not counting BTS. But you know, if you're just counting actual groups that are rap groups outside of America, they're the biggest. If you go to their, their pages, they got hundreds of millions of views for their videos. And right now, Vice, Vice, which is part of Viacom, which is part of Disney, right? This is part of Disney, actually monetizes this. This is from a Disney, this is from a Viacom. This, this example of blackface is currently monetized right now. You can find it right now. Noisy is, is a s subsidiary of Vice, which is part of Disney and Viacom. They, Disney makes money off of blackface still, even though they ba banned their, you know, old school videos and stuff like that. They're still on some, you know, Nazi stuff, right? They, they show their Nazi flags back in the day, right? And I'll, and I'll be showing, uh, I'll be adding the, the, the cartoon section of the chart in the future. This is just the top 100, like, ce celebrities of the modern era. Other charts in the future will have the cartoon charts, of all the cartoon, you know, blackface and, and sambos and all that type of stuff. And then, the, you know, the international stuff, people in all the other countries, that, like I was mentioning before. And then also uh, all the, the Christmas holiday, because people will try to act like it's only Netherlands that's doing the, the blackface Zwart P thing, but it's actually all over Europe. Blackface is actually, the, the original Christmas tradition is blackface. So all this actually comes from, from the Christmas tradition, the European Christmas tradition of blackface, all over Europe is blackface, and I have proof of each country, people doing it in, in small villages, right? The, the old school tradition. So in the new school tradition, the elves are green, right? But originally the elves were black slaves that were in blackface, and, they, and the Caucasian people still to this day, all over Europe, put blackface on, and they go around and, and, and hand the gifts to the kids as War Pete or a bunch of different names. Right, this Father Whipper in, in France, you know, every every there's Krampus in in, uh, in Austria. Every country has their own, usually different name. Right, so we're gonna flip back. So yeah, so they've done blackface multiple multiple times. Right, this this uh, um stupid rapper right here, 
Yolandi Visser. A lot of people love her. You know, I have a friend named, uh, or uh, associate named Alex English. I wouldn't call him a friend because he's booking Die Antwoord. He actually booked them. And then I got some people together and we made like an online thing to cancel them. And he canceled that show. Then he rebooked it later that year. So, you know, he's, in, and, the, you know, look at this. She's got black on the palm of her hand, which is even more racist because black people, our palms of our hands aren't, aren't dark. You know what I'm saying? It's even more racist, you know? Right? Only gorillas actually have, like, dark palms of their hands, you know? So she's even being even more racist, right? And, you know, people try to be like, oh, well, they're just making fun of rap. But no, she's making fun of black women, right? And she's the most, she's probably the, outside of, like, Megan and Nikki and Cardi like that, she might be one of the, the richest, one of the, the biggest uh, women rappers right now on the low. Seriously. If you look at their views, look at their numbers, go to their page right now, Diane Wirt. It's D-I-E and then A-N-T-W-O-O-R-D, right? Okay, so next, we got this guy from Germany who's totally obscure, uh, Pejwak Pesh uh, Gasriani, right? This guy right here, I'm not sure where he's from, but he's from, this is Germany. This is him doing the, the, the Heil Hitler sign and he's wearing blackface. And he's got, you know, gold, he's got fronts in his mouth. He's acting like, kind of like Lil Wayne in the video. He's actually, in the video, he's actually eating f fried chicken in a scene too. So he's in blackface eating fried chicken rapping, you know. And, you know, he's, he's like a comedian, musician or whatever. But it's like, yes, yeah, it's, it's racist. You know, this cat's racist. This is clearly, all these people are clearly racist, right? And they all have their own excuses for for. For, for that, you know, so I'm going to be doing an extensive documentary on, on uh, exposing Diane Word and all their blackface instances, as well as uh, the stuff, you know, the, them torturing women and stuff like that. You know, they've done a lot of heinous things. All right. OK. And next we're going to Lady Gaga. Everybody loves G Lady Gaga. She's very, very popular, very, very famous. Right. And Lady Gaga, um, you know, so she you can see here she's got friends with her in blackface so she's down with blackface she's worn blackface on her herself on the cover of v magazine right this is v magazine this is blackface you know you could say like oh she's just trying to be like uh tan or something or you know she could get that tan it's like no she can't get this tan this is called blackface yes she did it sorry so and she look how much she's worth 320 million lady gaga's worth so all these people are worth millions Right? Except a few. It was only a couple that weren't worth millions. So this is her in the front of V Magazine, right? I don't see people, you know, I see people still sweating, jocking V Magazine, you know, like all, to, to me, all, everybody on this list is dead to me. Like all this stuff, I, I don't care about any of these institutions, any of these people, right? Once you do blackface, you, you, you disappear in my eyes, you know? So yeah, uh, you know, Lady Gaga is clearly a, uh, is clearly a racist. She's clearly a white supremacist. This is, uh, you know, right? This is, this is very clear, right? Look at that. That's very, very clear. She's cool with it, and she's doing it in magazines, right? And I purposely put this older picture of her in there because I'm sure she would rather have a younger picture, all right? Now, let's see. So now, I don't even know who this woman is. Luan de Lesseps. If anybody uh, that's watching right now, you can uh, type in what she... Uh, who she, what she's known for. I know she's like some reality TV show kind of person and she's worth 25 million, right? And, you know, and she did blackface as well. She's got the Afro, right? All right, next we go to Katy Perry, all right? Got Katy Perry worth 330 million, all right? So Katy Perry, she did these um, blackface kind of shoes, right? You know, you could just say that they're just lips or whatever, but then when you connect them with... Um, with this, you know, you could say like, oh, she's just doing that like 80s kind of motif, you know, in the 80s when everybody was had the rhinestone shirts, t-shirts and stuff. She's kind of doing that whole style. But, you know, look, she's got black, you know, these women that are faking like they're black women and making fun of black features. You know, um, if you go to, uh, I believe, uh, some, maybe the Talmud, I'm not sure. It says something about um, blacks in there, or, or maybe, I don't know if it's the Torah or the Talmud. It says something about black people and their grotesquely long members. And, um, you know, that that's a part of white cast ridicule is ridiculing black features, not only black lips, black skin, black hair, Afro hair, 
but also ridiculing people being overweight, ridiculing big butts, ridiculing, you know, things like that, features that are, are part of people that are pure homo sapien, right? Because black people were the original humans, pure homo sapiens, you know, have bigger butts than those who merged with uh, the Neanderthals, right? Okay, so th we have her right here, Katy Perry, with a bunch of, you know, big butts, and they're like, and they're mummies too. So this is even um, uh, sacrilegious on a whole nother level too, the fact that, that, uh, that these are actually, they're supposed to be mummies with big booties. These are supposed to be, like, she's got her Egyptian look, she's got her unk on. So these are all her backup dancers. They're supposed to be like black women uh, mummies with big booties, right? Because her music video for this, she's like in Egypt and stuff, and it's like Egypt theme, and you know she's doing her Cleopatra, Liz Taylor thing, or whatever. And you can see, look, they're they're mummies and they're big breasts, big you know, big butts, you know, it's it's, it's uh, big lips, you know, it's just stereotypes. These are black stereotypes, you know. She's clearly doing blackface, and then she's got the shoes that go with it, right? So it's like you see the show, see the face, right? The face, and then the shoe represents that face, right? So she made the blackface shoes, right? All right, next, um, and I don't listen to her music, I don't, but uh, yeah, so next we got Judy Garland, right? Everybody loves uh, Dorothy, so yep, Dorothy did it too. Dorothy's racist, all right? She did it multiple times, all right? This is Judy Garland, I'm not sure what movie this is, but, all right? And she was worth about 20 million when she passed her estate, all right? And look, she's got the, the, the Piccinini uh, uh, braid style, you know, and she's got... You know, and that's what I was saying before. Notice how all these different blackface, they're all really unique. You know, it's like the way that, if you look at the way that um, this paint is versus like the paint of Sarah Silverman. Let's go back to Sarah Silverman. I'm not going to let her escape this for people that are just coming in, right? Sarah Silverman has the similar style. She's doing the classic kind of blackface style where it's actually black, the color black, and she's using the white lips, right? But her lip pattern is a little bit different, right? Okay, next, all right, so we're gonna go back. Let's see, where were we? Oops, it's down here. All right, so now, um, let's see, we're at Judy Garland, all right? So, right, we see her there, got her black face. Everybody loves Dorothy, right? But yep, Dorothy's racist. So it seems like all the top celebrities, all the top, you know, this chart is everybody, right? Let's see who's next. Michael Richards, yep, Seinfeld, I mean, uh, uh, Kramer, Kramer did it. Kramer did blackface. This is yes, he did it in an episode. He did blackface, um, and, I, and you know I think he I don't know if he was in a tanning booth or something in the episode, but uh, they mention him like somebody maybe mistakes him for being black or something in the episode. So it's not just like um, he can get out of it with using the tanning booth thing or whatever. But it was it was definitely a blackface episode, right? And then also remember people that don't remember if you remember. I don't know how many, within the past decade, uh, maybe it was more than a decade ago, when uh, uh, the guy that plays Kramer, Michael Richards, went on a rant, and he was, like, saying the N-word to somebody in the audience. Like, somebody was heckling him at one of those famous comedy places in, like, L.A., and then he, to counter the heckler, he started dropping M-bombs on the guy. So that even confirms even more. Um, but see, this chart, I was just focusing on just blackface. I wasn't putting quotes or anything like that that could be debated or disputed. All right, so this is just proof that all these people are racist people participating in the blackfish black <laughs> there's black fishing too but the black face ritual all right we got alexa witt joining the house paperboy prince shout out to paperboy prince all right you know um you know future president right here all right so we got jamie kennedy all right and let's look at uh michael richard's net worth 45 million this fool's worth 45 million once again all these people are worth millions millions and millions so jamie kennedy um, you see, he's, he's kind of, uh, you know, one of those dynamic comedians that wears all the different costumes and he's, you know, once again, he's mocking overweight, uh, black women and he's uh, ridiculing black obesity, which is an epidemic in our communities. And, you know, and also black judges, you'll notice that in this chart, there's a lot of people mocking black judges. You know, there's a lot of black judges out there, a lot of black social workers, uh, you know, that tends to be a typical thing that, uh, the Caucasian cast tends to, to mock. All right. He said, you would have been my slave 100 years ago. Wow, that's what, so that's what Michael Richards said when he uh, was, uh, you know, um, coming at the guy that was the, the, the heckler. He said, you would have been my slave 100 years ago. Wow, yeah, exactly. You know, he's, that's the master cast. The, the top, um, the, the white cast is basically the master cast f for everybody else. And all right, so yeah, Jamie Kennedy, all right, we see this cat, this fool, all right. 
and and we can also gather too. Look, he's worth twelve million. And these are all multimillionaires. All right, now we're gonna go over. All right, so this we already talked about this guy Ninja, and this is the same video that um, this one's in. Even though they've done multiple blackface multiple times, I didn't put all the times in here. But you know, this is this is actually monetized by Disney. You can look it up. You, if you go find this video, it's called Fatty Boom Boom. And um, it's, uh, you know, very, very uh, racist. Like at the, the beginning of the video, it's like a, 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 a black uh, South African doctor. And he like pulls some weird, he's a gynecologist and he pulls some weird insect out of some woman. And it's just, it's just making South Africans look very, uh, very, it's a very negative uh, depiction of South Africans and then they're sitting here in blackface in the video um, and, and stuff like that so yeah they're both worth 10 million him and his wife and yeah these people are, are total wankers you know but the, sadly enough here's another story I got about Die Antwerp I was in Mississippi once because um, Mississippi is actually my, my native homeland um, my people the black Choctaws and stuff like that and Chickasaws um, I was at this hotel and I saw it, they had a rap section. It was like an international section, and um, I, and the thumbnail for the international section was actually Diane Word. So it was like they were the they were the the um, actually you know what it was it, it was it was African hip hop section. It was the thumbnail for Africa hip hop. So Diane Word, this group that wears blackface, that both Viacom and Disney and Vice, they're all partners. They monetize this. Right. That I mean, right now, all you people with your Disney Plus subscriptions, Disney is monetizing blackface still new blackface. This video has hundreds of millions of views and they had nobody's canceled it. They have, uh, you know, in the fashion world, the, you know, the people don't get canceled. Right. Because they're just like, oh, you don't understand. It's fashion. They're high art. They're high. They're next level rap. This is like the new thing, you know. <laughs> right. Now, this fool right here, David Walliams. David, oh, but I forgot to Ninja. You know, he he also. I'm gonna when I expose them in another video. Ninja also. Um, he actually, uh, I believe, he was kidnapping a woman, um, a up and coming rapper. There's a, there's an up and coming. There was an up and coming rapper that was kind of down with their crew, and she was a witch, and she was trying to be down with their their magic and stuff like that. And he was making her do these rituals and stuff like that. And then they were getting really sadistic, and and uh, and then I believe he was like, you know, maybe he maybe kidnapped her at one point or, or physically harmed her or tormented her at some point. But she's been speaking out over the past couple of years or at least within the past year. And then they also um, attacked some uh, um, physically attacked. Uh, he at he physically uh, this this fool physically attacked uh, uh, um, Hercules love affair, you know. Um, so yeah, Hercules love affair. He physically attacked them and then he lied about it on camera and said that they attacked him. Right. Even though it's seen. So I'll expose all that in another video. All right. So let's move on to David Williams. This fool here. Once again, he's making fun of black faces, black hair. Um, and also um, he's making fun of black women being, um, you know, over, overweight or obese. Right. So, you know, a lot of people call this massage noir. Right. So misogyny plus noir, the French word for black. And they've joined that together to make a new term called massage, massage noir, which is, you know, specifically uh, you know, racism directed at black women, right? All right, so, um, and misogyny intertwined, right? So, so it's both, right? So this is David Williams, but the the key note is that he received an MBE, right? This is the, the, the most excellent British award or whatever it stands for, um, of the most excellent British Empire award, you know, the queen or whoever gave this to him, you know, this is like one of the highest awards. And they're talking about taking Wiley's away. Wiley has an MBE. And due to Wiley's statements, they're talking about taking his away, but they're not talking about taking this guy's away. Notice, right? Why is that? Why they're talking about taking away Wiley's MBE, but they're not talking about taking this guy's MBE away. Nobody's trying to cancel him, right? So I, I don't even watch this. You know, I'm not a f real fan of uh, British comedy you know, uh, Monty Python, you know, it's funny to me back in the day, but you know, outside of Monty Python, I, I can't really laugh at British humor, right? Um, so yeah, so look, he's got an MBE, that's the highest award, right? And then boom, we see this cat, his, his crew member, Matt Lucas, who he works with, he also came to uh, fame from uh, wearing a uh, blackface and also included 
Walliam's doing the 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 Asian um, the 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 fake epicanthic folds on the eyes and you know uh, racist Asian stereotypes. I added that in here too, but this is mainly a, a blackface chart. All right. So here, his partner Matt Lucas worth ten million. Right. They're both worth ten million, even though he's got more wars than his partner. And his partner is also known for mocking black people as well. Also mocking like maybe. Uh, you know, in, in Europe, there's a large demographic of North Africans and, and, uh, and, and lighter skinned black people and things like that. Also Arab people as well. And, you know, so they're just making fun of, of black people. Right. And, you know, we got him being Mr. T right there, you know, so this is Matt Lucas, right? This fool. Now we got Matt Espinoza. All right. So Matt Espinoza, um, I have no idea who this kid is, but, uh, I believe uh, uh, one of my cousins, a teen, put me onto onto him, and I researched him, and and um, yeah, so he's worth two point five million, right? And and you notice this too within the Latin community. There's a lot of people um, that you know. There's a lot of you know. In my experience, anytime I've traveled in in South America, I've noticed there's a lot more. Um, there's a lot more um, day to day racism in South America than here in. Um, Protestant countries in, in the U.S. because uh, I think the Catholic system for some reason seems to be a lot more like kind of brainwashing, like people are a lot more farther back. Like if you drive all around America, you see black people owning expensive cars, expensive houses, even though we're oppressed, we're still coming up. But if you go to South America, we're oppressed and we're not coming up, you know, so at least here we're oppressed and we're coming up, you know, out of the oppression. But, you know, if you go to South America, we're just not coming up, you know. And that's that's part of it, right? Is is the culture of of you know a black Spanish speaking people saying they're not black, and then the, you know all these people hating on them, and, and you look at Univision, and it's all you know racist stuff, right? All right, so this is Matt Espinosa. Not even really sure who he is, but uh, this cat, this is a Middle Eastern cat, uh, K. Von Novak. All right, and uh, this is him being super racist on uh, television. This might be Egyptian television, I believe. Um, I forget where this is. But uh, yeah, so this is him being super racist, right? Just very, very racist stereotypes. Now we're going to go to this guy, Reese Shearsmith. He's worth um, 1.7 million, right? And these people are all over a million, right? 4 million, 2.5 million. Like nobody, you know, only mini me so far has been like, under a million, all right? Now, Reese Shearsmith, right? So this is super racist, right? You know? And, uh, you know, and some of these things were on Netflix. A lot of these things were canceled off of Netflix, all right? All right, so next, we've got Oliver Peck. This guy, I believe, is a tattoo artist from uh, one of those, uh, you know, reality shows with the tattoo people and stuff like that, all right? And, and that's him, right? Acting like a basketball player, right? common uh you know halloween thing so a lot of people it's a very common caucasian uh ritual international ritual to dress up like black people for uh halloween and ridicule people for halloween even though it comes from the christmas christmas tradition now tracy ullman i i grew up on tracy ullman you know the tracy ullman show this is actually where the simpsons first got discovered right because uh the tracy ullman show used to have a segment where they would show, you know, the early Simpsons drawings, you know, early Simpsons cartoons, right? Where, you know, it was like before they had, you know, the same drawings that they do now, like they looked a lot different. Their their drawings were different. So, so you know, you see her, you know, making fun of black people, right? She's making fun of um, Asian people. Um, she's making fun of black people again, right? She's making, just making fun of black women, protruding her lips out, right? And then look at her wars, look. Look at these awards. She has all types of awards. People love her. All right. So it just shows that blackface pays. Racism pays. All right. 115 million worth 115 million. That's a lot. Now, this guy, Noel, Noel Felding, um, I have no idea who this guy is. You know, I know he's like a British comedian or something. And look and look at his. Right. He's like doing Jimi Hendrix kind of psychedelic blackface. He's doing like um, this guy. I don't know. He's like a mosquito or something. Or I don't know what he's trying to be. He's doing like a. Um, you know, voodoo kind of uh, blackface, you know, just all different types, right? That's, and that's what's interesting about this chart is that if you look at all these different blackfaces, it's almost like they've seen each other too. A lot of these people have se on this chart have seen each other and they're, and they're trying to do something different. All these are very, very unique uh, forms of blackface, which is scary actually, because it's like, wow, you know, they're actually 
one of the most creative things that they're actually doing is blackface, right? Because they steal so many other genres. You know, this blackface thing is actually them being creative, right? All right, so right, we're going. To, so that's Noel Felding, right? Six, worth six million. Now we're going to go to the next row. All right. Now we got Bette Midler, right? Bette Midler. All right. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit now because we're getting kind of these ones are getting a little bit bigger. All right. So this is Bette Midler. All right, worth two hundred and thirty million. And just like Tom Hanks, she's not in blackface herself, but she's rolling with somebody that's in blackface. And she knows what blackface is, so you know she got caught. And look at her award right there, you know. So we know we we know what these people do behind closed doors. All right. Next, Howard Stern. I already did a whole um, maybe it was like a three-hour uh, lecture on him, and we went into all these instances and and stuff like that. I'll put links to that. And you know, obviously, you know he and he tried to say he tried to weasel out of it and be like, I never wore blackface, but obviously he's lying. He wore it one, two three, four, maybe more times. It was just four that were on camera. You know, I'm sure he did it even more times than that. But uh, yeah, so that's Howard Stern. And look how much he's worth. 650 million. He might be the richest person on this whole chart. 650 million. And he's done it the most times. So we see that there's a correlation between uh, being a millionaire and wearing blackface, right? If you're a Caucasian, right? If you're part of the, the white cast, the master cast, right? All right. So next, we're going to flip over next to Shane Dawson. All right, and this is, I believe this is like a YouTuber guy or whatever, blogger, and he's worth 12 million. And he went there, he wore his black face, all right? So he can get to that next level of uh, stardom because maybe that's what it is. Like maybe you have to do black face to get to that super, you know, 20 million level, you know? All right, so this is Ant and Deck, a racist group from, uh, a racist comedian uh, troupe from the UK, right? And here's them making fun of Asian women Here's them making fun of black males. Here's them making fun of black women, right? And look what they won. They got their, they both got MBEs, right? They both got the most excellent British award or whatever, order of the most excellent British person or whatever you call it, you know, um, and he's worth 7 point, I'm sorry, 77.1 million, right? And then... 40 million, right? So these guys are worth a lot. All the all the people that I've covered so far, all together, if you add it up how much they're worth, we've already gotten into like probably billions, you know? It's a lot, a lot of money. And, you know, all right, so these, you know, obviously these people are clearly sick and they're sociopathic, right? And once again, notice how um, the, the women, the black women here are a little bit more portly, a little bit more um, um, uh, heavier stature. You know, they're making fun of black obesity once again, right? All right. Now, next, this is an actual married couple. Um, Rod McKellany uh, and Caitlin Olson. Right. They um, they played. Uh, this was like a lethal weapon thing where he's supposed to be Danny Glover and she's supposed to be like um, a black woman that may be um, the guy that's supposed to play uh, the, the, the Caucasian cop is marrying or something like that. So he's like marrying her off. And here they are together in real life. So they're actually they're actually really married in real life, and they're worth fifty million as a couple, and they're playing blackface right here. So this is how sick people are that they would actually you know degrade the sanctity of their marriage and um, you know uh, wear blackface right. Now Ben Stiller, everybody loves Ben Stiller, and yep, he did it. Ben Stiller did blackface. Ben Stiller definitely did blackface. It's right here. All right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. All right, so Ben Stiller did it, right? He's worth $200 million. I thought he'd be worth more than that. But Howard Stern's actually worth more than Ben Stiller. So, yeah, um, you know, and once again, somebody tried to call me out and be like, hey, why are there so many... Um, whoops, I got the light on by accident. Somebody tried to call me out and be like, why are there so many, um, you know, Jewish people on this list? But I'm like, hey, I just put... Whoever was wearing blackface, I just put it on the list. So... Whoever's on the list is, is on the list, all right? So, um, but we can see there's a clear trend developing. All right, so let me turn this light off. Let me see how I can turn this light off. Let me see, I accidentally turned the, the light on. Let's see, is the light off now? There we go, okay, good, the light is off, all right? The light is off. All right, so yeah, so that's Ben Stiller, worth 200 million, and look at his awards. He's got some major awards there, right? 
It's like MTV Awards and stuff like that, right? Now let's go to a little bit farther back. You know, so this chart focuses on, you know, people that are out now, you know, more modern people. But, you know, it, it goes back a little bit. But I'll have another chart that has all the old stuff on it, all the black and white stuff. Um, so, yeah, Betty Grable did it, right? One to five million as her state was worth when she passed away. She's got the Piccanini, uh, the, the Piccanini braids, right? And if you look at um, the new cover of, uh, I forgot what cover it is, but uh, Diana Ross's daughter is wearing Piccanini hairstyle today, you know? So, you know, all these celebrities, they're down with this stuff and they, they do it secretly, you know, and they do it publicly, right? And this is June Haver, a lesser known actress worth one to five million, right? And this is them, uh, this is them together in the same scene. So this is actually one scene where they're both together right here. So Betty Grable and June Haver, right? And this is them together, right? And that's probably just Betty Grable right by herself, right? And they're doing blackface, right? Um, all right, so next, we're going to get to the next page, next line. Now we've got Grace Slick of Jefferson Airplane Pilot, right? So, you know, like, dong, 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 dong. Like everybody knows that song, I, and I've played that song for years. You know, I always play that song. I always play, uh, you know, the the um the the White Rabbit song, right? And you know, a lot of people, um, you know, White Rabbit is also has a lot of other connotations. White Rabbit is also the name for you know adrenochrome, and that's a big uh you know issue that's popping up today because you know a lot of children are being um, kidnapped and their adrenochrome is being taken. You know, the, the adrenaline out of their their system and people are getting high off of it. Celebrities are using that adrenochrome to get high. And, you know, White Rabbit's another, you know, pseudonym for that. So yeah, so Grace Slick, she thinks she's being slick and she's on the cover of this magazine with the black fist, right? So you see how there's a lot of, you know, um, psychological warfare games kind of going on, you know, a lot of mind effery that's, that's kind of going on, right? Where you see this is like a, um, I believe, right, Jimi Hendrix was on this magazine cover. He says, Hendrix, I'm being black, gray slick. It says, yeah, gray slick and Jimi Hendrix, I'm being black, right? So they're they're trying to, son, they're, at the same time, they're, they're trying to uh, play Jimi Hendrix, having blackface on a magazine, cover of a magazine that he's in. You know, imagine you're Jimi Hendrix and you, and you open up this magazine and you're like, oh, I'm in the new teen set, this new teen magazine teeny bopper magazine in the 60s and boom it's a caucasian woman with blackface on the cover and boom yeah she's worth 20 million look at that all right all right now we got somebody everybody loves Vern. Vern, what's up Vern? right Vern, and Vern did it too he he played uh blackface in this movie one of his many movies he was a big hollywood success all right all right and he's worth 12 million when he uh i believe he passed away i guess um, now, Governor Kay Ivey from Alabama, they found her in this uh, from her yearbook, right? She's worth 200K. So, so you notice the politicians are actually the, the people with the least amount of money on this blackface chart, right? The politicians have been in the 200K or just 1 million or a couple million. You know, all the celebrities are way beyond that, right? So, yeah, she really went in there, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, so she, this, this, uh, thing, they all have blackface and there's a lot of people in this picture, but this is just like the two of them. All right. Now, Seth Rogen, this is actual black male that's in this picture, but Seth Rogen actually, um, had his, his people put blackface on this poor boy. Right. And, and, uh, Melinda Wade says, how do we get here? Shaking my head. You're right. How do we get here? We got here through, through colonialism and, and, and rape and slavery and, and, uh, um, a lot of uh, heinous things, and this is like, um, this is kind of like a um, a trail from that, you know. All right, so yeah, Seth Rogen, he had this young black child wear blackface as an extra for another black actor, but it's like, why would they need him? You're like, yeah, the actor was darker than him, but there's no need to put blackface on a on a child, um, you know. And that's 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 child abuse, right? You know, because that's this is racial ridicule. All of this is racial ridicule by sociopathic, sick people. This is like a, you know, psychological, economic, um, infographic chart, right? We're showing the, um, the sociopathy of, you know, of multimillionaires. And, and these, are, these are sick people. Now, everybody loves Alejandro Jodorowsky, right? All right. Everybody loves Holy Mountain, right? You know, everybody, we, we all, you know, uh, 
hit a bowl and, and watch, you know, uh, Holy Mountain, right? That's like a thing people do, right? College kids do that. And yeah, his new movie. All right, we're back. Yeah, the my battery ran out, so I just plugged it in. So we're back. Now I'm about to flip it back around. All right, so let's see where we were. All right, so, all right, so we were just at Alejandro Jodorowsky, right? So for people that um, are aware of Alejandro Jodorowsky, you know, Holy Mountain is a big, like, you know, college kid kind of film where, you know, kids will, you know, hit a bong and, and, uh, and watch Alejandro's Holy Mountain, which is a very famous movie because it's very, you know, psychedelic and it's very abstract. Um, you know, because the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of these people, most of these people are very talented. And this shows that you can be talented and you can still be racist. So, you know, ta being somebody being talented doesn't excuse them from being racist. And somebody, um, you know, being racist can also be talented, right? So we see it says manual of psychomagic. Now, you know, the practice of shamanic psychotherapy, you know, his his films are very um, shamanic definitely you know very out there very triply very trippy and uh oh wow yeah exactly and he's on he's on some dark stuff so eric spencer says i saw this movie and it has some pedal elements too i'm sure it does yeah all these people um you know people that are sick in a sociopathic way are also tend to be sick in a sexual way too all the um you know sicknesses psychological sicknesses tend to tend to go together so we have um, Alejandro Jodorowsky right here. Um, he actually had a petition to get one of the, to be able to do Dune back in the day, and they never chose his version of Dune. There's a whole doc documentary on that. But uh, yeah, so he did blackface in this movie, and notice he's got a um, you know like a, a a caricature of a Moor, you know, with his fez on and uh, and and the, the white lips and and all that type of stuff, right? So yeah, so this is magic. So remember that blackface is a ritual and it's a part of white supremacy magic. Remember, magic is spells and spelling and words. And, you know, if you go to the word grimoire and grammar, they kind of mean the same thing. They come from the same place. So grammar and grimoire and, and uh, you know, the whole thing of uh, when people say, uh, when people say the secret and you, you know, say something and you make that thing happen, Right, you manifest destiny. You know that's what they're doing. You know, um, all right. So yeah, so so they're clearly uh, you know showing dominance over black people by ridiculing them. Right now we're gonna go to somebody that America really loves, Desi Arnaz. Right, they did it. Desi did it. All right, I love Lucy. Oh, so oh wow. So Eric Spencer says the kid in this in this video is actually being. The kid in this, um, the boy that's in this picture is being seduced by his mother, which is sickening, right? So there, there is not, a, it's not only incest, it's incest and pedophilia and blackface, right? So, you know, he's clearly a sick person, right? You know, all right. So, so Desi Arnaz, all right, of I Love Lucy, right? We, we got him here in blackface wearing the, uh, you know, kind of Don King Afro kind of style, right? It's before Don King, but yeah, you see he gets caught by some police or whatever, right? So they did it, and, and let's see what their net worth is. 20 million. I thought it would have been more, but yeah, 20 million. And Dorowski, you know, he spent so much money in his movies, tripping out, you know, he doesn't have that much money. You see, well, only 1.5 million relative to all these other people. All right, now let's go to uh, Kevin Bishop. Oh, and let's look at their award, right? I really want to focus on I Love Lucy and their award, right? You know, so you can see that they have... Uh, you know, the, the, all these people that are wearing blackface are winning awards, they're multi-millionaires, you know, so blackface pays, right? Blackface p clearly pays. All right, now next we're at Kevin Bishop. Kevin Bishop, um, I'm not even sure who this guy is, but he did blackface here. He's doing it kind of here, acting like he's Indian or something, right? And uh, yeah, that's Kevin Bishop worth 1.5 million, right? He's down with Disney, right? And we had the other, the, the, the Diane where it was down with Disney, right? Oh, it keeps on going. All right. Next, we have Jason um, Aldean, and he's worth $80 million, right? Um, I'm not even sure who this guy is. I think he is, uh, maybe he's a, you know, like a country western guy, right? Got his hat on, his country hat on, just like Diplo did. did. And look, he's acting like he, you know, he's got his... They're, they're acting like, you know, for Halloween, they're, they're, they're wearing their ritual blackface. Once Next, we have Karina. I believe she's a YouTuber, right? 
like a blogger, Karina, um, Karu Pups, uh, Martin Kevick, right? 50, worth 50K, right? So she's probably one of the broker people on this uh, list, people with uh, less money, right? She's a blogger, YouTube person, all right? Next, and this, and also this, let me go back to this because this kind of relates to all the like 4chan, 8chan, you know, racism and, and you know, K-pop, J-pop racism and, and the relationship between, um, you know, uh, I would say like, like, like the 4chan, um, the racism between, the, the connection between fascism and anime. There's a big connection. A lot of people that are fascists are into anime, right? And, uh, you know, I have a friend, uh, DJ uh, Hero, he, uh, you know, he's an authority on that. You know, he's been giving lectures on years for that. All right. And maybe we'll have him on the show one day. We'll interview him. All right. Now here's Aphex Twin. Everybody loves Aphex. Um, I actually played at the same time as him. Um, we, we both headlined this festival in Den Haag years ago. Um, and you know, they had us play at the t same time, you know, like he was on and I was on in, in different rooms, at different stages. So he was on the main stage, I was on a smaller stage, and uh, they had us headline it at the same exact time. But yeah, so he's not actually wearing the blackface in this, but he had, most likely Chris Cunningham actually made these um, these prosthetic faces that they put on different people. So this is from a Die Antwerp video, right? This is from one of his uh, Chris Cunningham videos. So Chris Cunningham made these masks and then Chris Cunningham made these same masks. And they, here they have actual black women wearing a mask of his face that's in blackface. Now, when just this one video came out, the video works within the context. You know, the video, you know, um, even though it's blackface, it's like, okay, all, all the women get his face. So the women were originally black. So obviously they're going to, um, you know, look like him. So this kind of works within the context, but when he came out with this video, another person in blackface with, with Diane Wirt, with Diane Wirt, right? Right here, this is Diane Wirt, this is Disney right here. Disney put this out. This is a Disney blackface thing, and this is also Disney, Disney, Viacom, Vice, all together put this out. And I'll be exposing that whole video in the future too. I'm gonna be doing a lecture just on Disney and Vice um, monetizing new blackface because they're monetizing this. They're making millions from this. This video has million, millions of views. But yeah, back to Aphex. You know, people really, really look up to Aphex. So this was a video collaboration he did with Diane Wirt where he's wearing blackface. And that's what really put him over the top. You know, because before he could have kind of gotten away with like, oh, the context of the video came out in like 1999. People weren't tripping on it. But, you know, when he came out with this with Diane Ward, it's like he's affirming like, hey, this is Diane Ward. That's where I am. That's that's why I want to be down with. You know, he was on tour with him for a while. Right. OK, so he's showing his true colors. Right. And I contacted Steven Tyler, not Steven Tyler. I'm sorry, Steven Weber. Oh, no, no, not Steven Weber. Steven Christian, Steven Christian at Warp Records. This is uh, you, Steven Christian at Warp Records. You know, um, we're going to do a whole documentary on the Aphex stuff. So get prepared for all that. All right, because you've been silent. I've been sending you stuff talking about Aphex and you've been silent. All right. But uh, all right. So Pat Paulson, Pat Paulson. Right. So this is a cat from back in the day. Older people will know who he is. Right. One to five million. He did it, too. He did the blackface, the traditional style of blackface. So they've all done it. This is this is the top 100 chart. Right. We're about halfway so far. Probably not even halfway. Now, Johnny Carson. Right. If anybody remembers Johnny Carson, before Jay Leno, um, before it was the Jay Leno show, it was the Johnny Carson show. Johnny Carson actually passed down his show to Jay Leno. When, and this was the time when Arsenio was taking over. Um, for those that don't remember, Arsenio was the biggest thing ever, right? And everybody was watching Arsenio. Everybody was like, hoo, 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 right? Everybody was doing that, right? Everybody was watching Arsenio. It was the biggest show ever. And then they just canceled it. And then they put Jay Leno on. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like totally sketchy, right? And it hasn't been a black uh, talk show since, you know, a uh, late night show. I mean, late night talk show, you know, outside of like Montel and RuPaul or whatever, right? But uh, so yeah, Johnny Carson, right? He did blackface in a skit, right? This is Johnny Carson in blackface. He did it actually himself, right? So most people in this chart are the actual actors that did it. 
you know. But this is actually Johnny Carson in blackface. And a lot of these were very hard to find. Like some of, like this was real hard to find. Like, you know, there's a list on Wikipedia that says most of the people that have done it back in the day, not the new people, but the old people that have done it. And, you know, he's on that list, but you, it's really hard to find it. You can't, there's no links to, to the stuff. So I had to really do some web research and really find this, but I found it. Right, so that's him right there in blackface. Like, it looks like it's the 70s or the 80s, right? All right, now, this is another person that everybody loves. So everybody loves Johnny Carson, worth 300 million, right? He's way up there, all right? Shout out to Frankie D's in the house, all right? Um, so Dr. Seuss, right? Dr. Seuss, everybody loves Dr. Seuss. We all grew up on these books, right? So a lot of people don't know, he started out doing super racist stuff before he started doing his uh, signature um you know uh like whoville and and uh the cat in the hat and green ham and all that type of stuff right before he did that he was doing this super racist stuff so we see a bunch of flies around these kind of sambo kind of figures um with b super big lips that are the size of their whole face these are very, very sickening stereotypes. You know, these are very, very racist things that he's doing, right? He's got the flies, he's got the fly swatter. I believe this might have been a, a fly swatter company called Flit. It was, uh, it was like a, um, a bug repellent, and, and the, the company was Flit. And so he's using um, black people to market bug repellent, right? And saying that they have flies, and this guy has flies, he's on an elephant. And but this king or whatever is sitting here, he's chilling without it because he's got flit. Right. So he was so he was doing this before he was uh, working with with kids. He was putting this in newspapers and ads and stuff like that. Here's another thing. This this actually got on the news. Early Dr. Seuss drawing depicts racist images. Right. And Dr. Seuss has not been canceled. Right. All his stuff is in it. You go to any kindergarten, first grade, you know, Second grade, first couple of grades, they have his books everywhere, all throughout the country, all over the world, right? All over the U.S., right? And, uh, right, so we see a bunch of um, black stereotypes here. This is all by Dr. Seuss, right? This is, this is Dr. Seuss here, right? So there's a bunch of, bunch of stereotypes. Look at these. This is just really sickening, really, really revolting. And this, this is very, very old stuff, too. This is probably, you know, from the 50s or the 40s. This might be from the 40s or something. You know, this is like before he got, you know, famous as a kid's author. He was doing a lot of racial propaganda. Wipe that sneer off his face. War savings bonds and stamps. So, yeah, this is wartime stuff, right? So this is anti-Japan stuff, you know, anti-Asian stuff. So he's very, very racist, right? You know, we got um, them boiling these uh, black racial stereotypes are boiling a, um, a, a Caucasian guy in a, in a pot, right? So these are like the natives, right? And then he's got the flies once again, right? So yeah, it's just very, very negative stereotypes. And this guy shouldn't be, you know, teaching anything to kids. You know, any anything that's, you know, yes, he's a talented artist and and uh, or whatever. But talent doesn't mean that um, you should be able to have access to children's um, books and and being in children's shelves, right? This is Doris Day. Doris Day from back in the day, you know, people, older people know who she is, and she ended, winded up making 200 million. So out of a lot of the old school celebs, she made a lot. A lot of people didn't make that much, but she made a lot. So that's Doris Day. She's got the classic black face on. Now, now we're gonna go some, to some super heavyweights, right? Like Dr. Seuss was a heavyweight. Even Johnny Carson was kind of a heavyweight, but these cats are super heavyweights. We got Peter Lawford, we've got Dean Martin, and we've got Frank Sinatra. They all did it. And they're chilling here with Sammy Davis, right? And Sammy Davis is also, you know, a friend of Anton LaVey, the head of the Church of Satan, um, right? You know, so, um, you know, we, we know where he's coming from, right? So, and I'll show the picture of him with LaVey, but uh, in, in the YouTube version of this lecture, right? So, yeah, we got Frank Sinatra right there worth 200 million, Dean Martin worth 30 million, and Peter Lawford worth one to five million, right? So these guys... This, these guys were, this is the original Ocean's Eleven. So Ocean's Eleven originally was blackface, right? Everybody likes, the, you know, the new Ocean's Elevens. I haven't even seen any of those. I don't, I don't I'm not a big into like heist movies and all that, but, you know, I'm more into sci-fi and stuff. But um, yeah, so they all did it. Peter Lawford, Dean Martin, and Frank Sinatra. So Old Blue Eyes went there. He did blackface, right? So, so I mean, basically everybody, like we've, all, we've already named almost all the top Hollywood stars, right? All right, now we're going to go to the next row, right? So we got all these mega mega
we got this guy, Sam Newman. Sam Newman, right? And I believe he's out of either New Zealand or Australia. Um, I can't remember if it's New Zealand or if it's Australia, but he's from over there in that region down under. And yeah, he's he's got blackface on right there. He's worth ten million, right? So that 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 winker is uh is you know these guys are all these are all sociopathic sick people, right? Now Fred Astaire, Fred Astaire did it too, right? Fred Astaire is one of the top icons. These are all the Hollywood stars. All most of these people have Hollywood stars of fame. So that makes you want to think about you know getting your star of fame and doing blackface kind of go together, right? All right, so that's Fred Astaire. He did blackface, right? That's him right there. Fred Astaire and blackface. So Fred Astaire is known for his dance, right? You see he's got his kind of, uh, you know, um, oh, look at all his awards, right? All these awards. So the awards, blackface, they go hand in hand, right? All right, now we'll move on to Tina Fey. Tina Fey's uh, a whack comedian, right? And she here she's trying to be, she's being a football player, here she's being a, a black male, I guess. She's supposed to be a man, I guess. Um, you know, here she's got her multiple awards, right? Just like just like Fred Astaire, right, with his awards. They got a lot, a lot of awards, right? So everybody that's in blackface is getting, they're, they're, they're getting rewarded for this. They're getting rewarded for uh, participating in this sickening ritual, right? Now, next, we're, um, I have a whole Asian section, too, of like, you know, outside of the States and, and stuff like that. But we've got this guy named uh, Ken Jeong and he's worth 14 million. He did some uh, super racist blackface, right? This, he's jet black in this picture. Um, yeah, so it's very, very racist, right? Next, we have John Hamm. I believe he appears a bunch on Saturday Night Live. I never really watched that show because it's, you know, they're they're super racist, you know, and they're always, you know, uh, you know, but uh, anyway, so yeah, John Han, he's worth 40 million. And yeah, he did blackface as well. And the Afro, got the freak Afro, right? So that's John Ham, all right? And he's got his award, right? They've all got the same award too. I forget what that is. That's like a Emmy. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, I forget. So Jenna Marbles, she's worth 8 million. She did blackface. I believe she might be like YouTuber or something, more of a newer celeb. All right, now we've got Leon Shuster. Leon Shuster, uh, he did a bunch, right? So he's done a bunch of blackface over the years, right? They, so they really like to, to, to ridicule us. These are all, a lot of different ways they ridicule us. So this is Leon Shuster. He's, it, he's ridiculing black women right here, ridiculing a black male, right? And just, you know, and, and they like to do the obese thing too. They're ridiculing black obesity all the time, right? and putting uh, prosthetic lips on, you know, this is similar almost to Zoe Saldana's Nina Simone thing, right? And that's another list. I don't have the list of, you know, of, of melanated people that did blackface. These are all, you know, people that aren't melanated that did blackface. So like, you know, Drake isn't in here, on here, but I'll have that in a different section, a different list. All right, because that has different dynamics, you know, obviously they're, they're cooning out. All right, so next, um, so yeah, so we got Leon Shuster, whoever this guy is, right? Now we've got the Golden Girls, right? Everybody loves the Golden Girls. You know, uh, my grandmother used to love this show. We used to watch it together. I used to watch it with my grandma, rest in peace. And, you know, so we've got them. Now the thing is about this thing is that, you know, they're wearing a mud mask. So you can say, hey, it's a mud mask. That's not blackface. But within the context of a show, they, they racialized, <clears throat> they racialized the, the actual mud mask. So they made it, um, you know, they made it as part of the joke and the thing, just the same way that in Seinfeld, they racialized, uh, let me see, the Seinfeld, they racialized this whole tanning booth thing and him doing blackface. So let's go back. So yeah, they, they racialized this and, they, and they're like, no, we're not black in the, in the thing or something like that, all right? They got their awards, right? All right. And there's different levels of extremity. I, like I would say this is more mild and this is more mild than like this, right? This is like more extreme, right? So there's a spectrum with the, even within blackface, you know, there's a spectrum. Now we're gonna go to a very, 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 very famous person uh, in Asia, Nigo. He's the guy that created a bathing ape. And my homie, uh, Brian Procell actually put me onto this. Shout out to, to Procell, Pros. Uh, he's like a famous stylist now, you know, um, you know, he's doing Drake. He's doing, he's a stylist. He started out as a stylist for cool kids, but now he expanded and he has his own, um, own, uh, store in, uh, the Lower East Side around 
people from all around the world collecting his stuff. But definitely check out Pros, Brian Procell. But he's the one that put me onto this whole thing with Nigo wearing blackface. Nigo, the creator of Bathing Ape. We'll flip back. So yeah, Nigo, this is uh, the creator of Bathing Ape. And this is him wearing blackface, right? You know, and, and like I was saying before, it's kind of a spectrum where we can see this blackface is a little bit different because it's, you know, it's not as dark, right? But it's still blackface, you know? So there's a spectrum of, even within blackface, there's a spectrum. And they're clearly, you know, wearing cross colors and, and wearing fake dreadlocks. Um, even though it looks like Hasidic curls, they're wearing the fake dreadlocks and they're supposed to be blackface, right? Now, next is this guy, uh, Raymond Blanc. Um, and um, he's chilling with somebody in blackface in this picture. So, you know, I added people that are, that are even chilling with people in the blackface because, you know, if you're publicly putting that out there, that's, it is what it is. So he's worth 8.6 million, right? Nigo's worth 35 million, all right? Next on the list, we have Justin uh, Didier, Didier uh, Rinders, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Belgium. So this is another uh, person that can implement, uh, you know, policies, and that's very, very dangerous, right? When we when you take blackface and you add blackface to the the ability to implement policies, just like Justin Trudeau. Let's see, Trudeau over here, right? Trudeau can implement policies. Governor Ralph Northam can implement policies. It's a very, very dangerous thing when somebody can implement policies and they are wearing blackface, right? So this is. Um, he's an actual justice out of, out of, uh, Belgium, right? So I guess he's a, um, an actual judge, right? So a judge wearing that, if he's a justice, that's super serious, right? That's very, very serious. And he's, uh, one of the heads of something with the EU, right? So that's very serious. You know, all the people that are trying to say, oh, racism is an American thing. It's not because blackface comes from Europe. The tradition started in Europe and then it came to America. All right. And I'll show that in a, in a future uh, lecture when we focus on Christmas, right? So this is a group called uh, um, Mo Moiro Clover Z, right? And they're a group out of uh, Japan, right? And they do blackface, right? You know, right? You see them there. It's like a girl group, like a J-pop group. So, you know, like I was saying before, J-pop and K-pop, there's a lot of, uh, um, uh, uh, in the future we'll show like the Middle Eastern, Asian, and Indian, and international section of this blackface chart. This is just like more, more so America and pop culture and stuff like that in America. But we're going to get into everybody in the future. So this group is clearly very, very racist. And it just shows that, you know, all over the world, um, everybody's ridiculing black people, no matter where you go. It's very, you know, the, the whole world is being racist against us, right? So I was out in Japan and I saw the racist Pokemon and all that type of stuff. Now, here's another group out of Japan, right? And this is, uh, they changed their name. It's called, they changed it to like Rats and Star. You know, at a certain point, it used to be uh, the Chanel's, right? Um, and yeah, so look, so look at them. Yeah, so this is out of uh, Japan as well. So this is Blackface, right? You can see that they've you know, made their whole career off of blackface. Every album cover is blackface in a different way. So we got the like kind of 90s kind of black um, look, right? You know, late 80s look, right? Blackface, look at that, blackface. Epic Records, this is the same record label as Michael Jackson putting out blackface. So can we really trust these labels? Look at this. All right, this is Japan, blackface. See that? Gospel rap, right? And this is them too. This is them collabing with another band. So look, yeah, they're all wearing blackface. Look at that, Rats and Star, blackface. They even got little, like, uh, you know, clay figurines, you know? All right? And here's even more. Look, more blackface. More blackface. Look at that. More blackface. Right, so they're doing the doo wop album, more blackface. Now, um, now let's gonna now we're gonna go back over to here. Now we got kids in the hall. Everybody loves kids in the hall, and they did blackface too. They did a lot of stuff on kids in the hall. So this is kids in the hall. This is Mark McKinney from Kids in the Hall doing blackface. Right, it's Mark McKinney right there, and he's worth four million. Right, and then another guy from Kids in the Hall, Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall doing blackface, worth three point eight million. Right, so 
and he's got like a you know flat top so you know they're making fun of black people they're, this is you know very sick um sociopath long and that's one of the reasons why i created this chart is to be able to encapsulate everybody in one place right because you see the articles all the time about this person that person but it's hard to piece everything together that's why i created this chart so that you know you can see everything in one in one uh in one place all right now we've got Lily Tomlin, who's wearing blackface and cross-dressing at the same time. So this is kind of like a trans blackface. And um, so, yeah, so it's Lily Tomlin. People love her, love her comedy. You know, she's very well known for her comedy. And she did blackface as well. They all did it. They all, all, all these stars are doing blackface. And look how much she's worth. $15 million. That's a lot of money, right? He's worth $3.8 million. He's worth four, right? So blackface clearly pays, all right? Next, um, uh, this woman, she actually passed away, I believe, in the late 90s, um, Dana Plateau from Different Strokes, and she wore blackface as well in the episode. They had Arnold uh, okay it, you know, and uh, she, was, uh, she wore blackface for, for a date, I believe. I think she had like a, a dress-up um, kind of date. And next, all right, so anybody that's, you know, grew up on Different Strokes, yep, Different Strokes went there too. They did blackface. Right, all your favorite shows, I Love Lucy, Different Strokes, they all did blackface, right? Next, Joey Lawrence, all right, from Give Me a Break, all right? Joey Lawrence from Give Me a Break, he did blackface, right? All right, there we go. That's Joey Lawrence doing blackface, all right? And, you know, obviously he was a kid, but so, you know, it's really the show's fault. But, uh, you know, um, he's on some, like, conservative stuff now anyway, so, you know. It's, it's pretty much the same, you know, he's clearly down with some, some racist stuff. Now, uh, this is a, a festival out of uh, Spain, and the other list is, in the future will have more um, insight on in all the different local festivals all over Europe. Oh, we've got Mark Grubstein in the house, shout out to Mark. And yeah, so this is, we're going through all the top um, blackface. Um, this is a, a, a chart for those just tuning in. We're exposing all the celebrity blackface, right? So, we're, we're, you know, we started, um, let me go all the way up here, right? We started with like Sarah Silverman, Jimmy Fallon, you know, this is just a, this is a table of racist celebrities and public figures, right? And these are everybody that's worn blackface uh, over the years. All right, <clears throat> next, so we're gonna go into, uh, let's see, where were we? We're gonna get back to where we were. All right, so we were over here. All right, we just did Joey Lawrence, and we just did this. Now, um, Conglitos, I was in Spain, and uh, the first time I saw it, I actually took this picture right here. This is from a video that I filmed in Spain, the Conglitos, and uh, this Sambo, this was recently. I was, in, I was like in Malaga, or somewhere in the south, and uh, so I was in the south of Spain, and uh, I'm pretty sure this was Malaga, but it could have been... Algerius or something like that or so, some other spot but um you know um, they still have this type of stuff up this is a a chocolate company out of Spain and they they import their export their stuff to Mexico too I think they eat this in Mexico also and they have sambos and all of their on all of their uh, packaging like this is from back in the day the 60s or something you know this is they got the the guys with the spears right so these are classic racial um caricatures you know this is all racist stuff right and they've got the conguitos so their character their main logo their main person is a, a racist figure right he's got a spear right these are just uh snippets from their their cartoons and their ads and stuff like that so all their ads are like cartoons with these um chocolate sambo figures you know all this this racist racist stuff right so that's conguitos out of spain all right next we're gonna go we're gonna we're gonna zoom in some more all right, now we're gonna go, we got Bill Murray over here. Everybody loves Bill Murray, and yep, he did blackface actually recently. Like he was doing Jimi Hendrix. One day he did it without blackface, and then recently he did it with blackface. So he's kinda, you know, flip-flopping, doing both, right? All right, and then we got Joy Bihar. Um, I had a request to add her. See, originally I didn't have her on the list because, uh, you know, this is just so mild, like it's very close to her original skin color. But the thing is that Raven Simone exposed her because when Raven Simone saw her in this picture, Raven Simone asked her like, "Hey, is that was that your natural complexion, or did you have uh, brown makeup on?" She said, "Yeah, I had brown makeup on, and and uh, I had my hair like an afro or whatever." And uh, she was trying to be black in this picture, 
you know, even though the, you know, the, the flash of the camera kind of brightens her up, uh, she had brown paint on her in this picture. So it did make it. Cause, cause if she didn't have brown paint on it, it's like, Hey, it's fine. You, you know, you can wear African stuff and wear Afros. I have no problem with that. I'm not on that whole cultural appropriation thing. It's like, Hey, if somebody wants to wear bangle earrings and, and cornrows, let them wear cornrows. But when you wear blackface, that's when it, when it becomes a problem right now. Um, you know, so that so Raven Simone actually exposed her and, and asked her, like, is that actually do you actually have brown um, makeup on your skin? And she said, yes, Joy Behar um, replied, yes, she, and she actually has brown makeup on her skin. Right. And then Joy Behar just tried to come at Wiley and, and try to put words in his mouth saying that he was denying the Holocaust and Wiley never denied the Holocaust. You know, he was just talking about you know, people that are in the, in the industry, in the record industry, he was specifically talking about that, you know? Um, um, so Zach Braff, um, this fool, right? He's worth 20 million. Um, yep, he did it, right? He's wearing blackface right there. Just like Joy Behar, she was uh, 12 million, right? And let's look at Bill Murray is worth 140 million. So once again, all these people are worth millions, right? Millions and millions. All right. Now, another pe person people like George Burns from the old school. I brought him in here in th this chart and he's worth 30 million when he passed. Right. And this is a very old skit that he did. He's not actually in this. He's not wearing the blackface, but he directed this. So they're like, this is a new skit by George Burns. And he had a whole menstrual stroll that he directed. Right. So he's he's down with blackface. And now we've got black fishing. This is a whole newer thing where um, where she's not actually wearing black face, but she's, you know, becoming black clearly, right? This is her before and this is her after. This is uh, Ariana Grande, right? Or Ariana Grande, or I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, uh, how she pronounces it. But yeah, this is a uh, black fishing. People call it black fishing, which is a form of black face, right? When, you know, there's a lot of Instagram models doing that now where they want to see what they look like if they're black, right? And uh, that's a big popular trend. And look, she's worth 150 million, right? So all these people that are going blackface are all very, very wealthy. They're all multimillionaires. So there's clearly a correlation between blackface and being a multimillionaire, right? Okay, next, um, this woman right here, uh, Sophie Applegarth is, uh, you know, mocking black people with her friends, right? She's like a, a YouTuber, I guess, right? They're mocking black people in uh, the basketball outfits. That tends to be a very similar, uh, very um, concurrent theme through a lot of these pictures. Um, people mocking black judges, overweight black people, people playing back, black people playing basketball, right? And right, so that's her, Sophia Applegarth, right? That's what she looks like, and I think her net worth is, must be very small if I didn't put it. So you know, ninety-eight percent of people in this chart have their net worth on it. It's just a few don't. The ones that are maybe bloggers that don't have that much money, or you know, politicians that don't have that much money. Next, we go to the Middle East, and uh, we have a whole I have a whole Middle Eastern section of the chart, but this isn't on that part. Um, so she's just kind of an outlier in this one. So this is Zara Abid, and I forget where she's from um, exactly, but definitely from the Middle East. Maybe she's from Egypt. She might be from North Africa. I can't remember. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, we see here that, yeah, she's doing the blackface. So this is all over the world. It's not just an American thing. People try to be like, uh, you know, oh, blackface, you know, that's some American thing, da, 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 you know, but clearly it's not, right? We got her, um, Zara, right? And she's wearing blackface, right? Okay, so let's move on to the next. We're almost done. We're almost at 100. We're almost at the top 100. So this is Jack Black. I just found this one recently. Um, and Jack Black, he did this in uh, this Michelle uh, Gondry movie. So that I put that because that's very important to note, you know, that France is very racist. And, you know, Michelle Gondry is a is a very, very re well respected director. And yeah, he went there. He had him do blackface twice within the same movie. Right. Um, I think he's supposed to be like Fast Domino here or something or I forget who he's supposed to be on the left. But um, yeah, so that's Jack Black with his MTV award, and he and Jack Black did it too. He did blackface. He's got the Afro wig on, right? Let's zoom in a little bit more. He's got the Afro wig, right? Clearly ridiculing black people, right? Now we've got David Cross. David Cross as well, all right. So you see, David Cross is clearly wearing blackface, right? And Netflix just took this off. 
so a, a bunch of these Netflix actually were on Netflix and Netflix took them out. So Netflix took this episode, Netflix took this episode off, but they didn't take off the whole show, right? Which is like, huh, go figure. Why wouldn't they take off the whole show if it's if it has a racist episode? So it just shows that they want to, you know, they want us to still consume white supremacy, but they just want to just kind of take away, uh, you know, the most blatant parts of it, right? All right, so that's David Cross worth 12 million, right? And Jack Black's worth 50 million. That's a lot of money. These are all multimillionaires. And we're ending on, up on the list, right? I think we're at, let's see, she's 101, 100. This, so now we're at 99. So Joan Crawford is 99, all right? And the list goes on, you know, I'm going to add more and more, you know, but this is just the top 100. So Joan Crawford, um, people might know her from Mommy Dearest. And, uh, you know, she's uh, wore blackface too. Look, this is Joan Crawford in blackface. I mean, it's colorized. This one's colorized. But this is the actual her applying it for this movie, right? This is her putting on the blackface, right? And this is another scene from the movie that's also colorized. But they colorized the blackface as well. So this is her winning Oscars, multiple wars. I, I guess she was bedridden at one point and she got the, the, the award given to her in, in bed. Right. So, yep, she went there too, Joan Crawford. And let's see, how much was she worth? Eight million when she passed. All right. This one, this guy from Taco, this, uh, this, this fool, um, you know, Taco, if you ever heard that song, Putting on the Ritz, you know, the 80s version of Putting on the Ritz, right? He did blackface in that video. And this guy, I believe he's a Dutch person from uh, somewhere in Southeast Asia, right? So, um, yeah. All right. Next. And, and he's worth one one to five million, all right? Now, next we have, uh, from India, we have uh, Bhumi Petnakar, and she went there, she wore blackface, and notice she's worth one million, right? And and notice, too, that the people outside of America aren't, aren't that rich compared to the American actors that did blackface, right? All right, next we have this guy, Chris Lilly, this fool. This was on Netflix. This show right here was on Netflix. This was like... He was supposed to, he was wearing blackface in this show right here with the hat on, right? You see him being, acting like a black woman. Um, now, originally I didn't have, you know, I wouldn't have put this picture in the matrix since it's not blackface. He doesn't actually have makeup on. This one, he does have makeup with the hat, but this one, he doesn't have makeup. He just has an afro, but I lined it up with all these other ones to give context of, you know, the fact that he just, this is part of his thing is, is imitating black people and ridiculing us, right? All right, so all these all these people are racist sociopaths that are, you know, sick people. Sociopathic means that you don't really care a, about um how people feel. You know, you're you're insensitive to people in a in a um in a in a sick way. You know, it's a sickness. Right? All right. So we see him, you know, imitating black people, right? All right, and I think we're past 100 already. I think uh I think this is 103 on this page. Page one's 103. Um, now we're at the end of page one, right? And that's it for today. So this is the top 100. We just did a top 100, and this is Maury Chaikin, and he's he's worth 1.2 million. He passed away before this show got to its second season, and people might know him from uh, a lot of different movies. Very famous actor, right? And this was him in, I think, maybe Glory. I think he was playing a Confederate, right? But he's been in a lot of movies, and that's him uh, in blackface, right? Kind of looking like a, maybe a CeeLo kind of character. I believe he had gold teeth in his mouth at one point in this same thing. But yeah, that's it. All right, and we just did it. So that's that's the top 100 blackface. Now, if you want the full chart, you can uh, you know just uh, holler at me, and uh, you know we can get you the full chart. Just you know you can PayPal us 20 bucks. All right. So this is the table of racist celebrities and public figures. Now this chart is ever ever changing, right? So I'm constantly adding new information. Um, I forgot to add Bewitched in here. That'll be the next line. But, uh, you know, there's the Christmas section. There's so many sections of this chart that I'm working on. So yeah, if you're interested in getting this chart, just just holler at me and you can uh, cop it at lovetechnologies at gmail.com. Um, and that's love spelled with L-U-V. So that's L-U-V technologies at gmail.com. And that's that's the PayPal. But I'll have links like that on, the, on all the videos and all that. Yep, so that's it. Wrapped it up. That's the top 100 blackface. All right. I grew up uh, in uh, Milwaukee as a kid. See what's going on in Kenosha right now with all that stuff. 
And uh, the reason my mom moved out of Milwaukee is just because it was so racist and there's no opportunities for her, you know. And, um, you know, so we uh, we left there, we fled Milwaukee and we moved down south. And, you know, um, the the first time I was called the N-word was in, uh, I don't think it was a Kenosha Brown Deer, I mean Kenosha YMCA, it might have been a Brown Deer YMCA, I think. And uh, this kid called me the N-word and I was like seven and I punched him. Well, first he called me African boy, then he called me um, black boy, then he called me the N word, and then I punched him right after that. And then the you know the, the 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 school counselor, I mean the YMCA counselor, you know had my mom come in. They talked to her, but uh you know, but despite all that, you know, it's a very very um, you know racial epitaphs, whether it's the N word or whether it's blackface. Um, to wrap everything up. Racial epitaphs are psychologically hurt black people and psychologically hurt anybody that looks at it because, um, you know, even if you're not being readily hurt by it, you're being influenced by it and you're becoming either an abuser or you're victimized by it. So either blackface victimizes people or it empowers people and makes them abusers to abuse other people. And the abuse has to stop. And that's why I created this chart to stop the abuse. All right. So lastly, we're going to find... Uh, I'm just going to add, this is like an extra, this is extra credit that's going to be uh, added to the to another part of the chart. I'm just going to um, bring up the, uh, the Bewitched. So we're just going to, this is the last, this is the last thing note. We're just going to add uh, Bewitched and I'm going to show um, how Bewitched did Blackface, you know. So and that was a show that I used to really like. Um, and uh, so let me go to the photos. I'm going to find Bewitched. So they all did Blackface and Bewitched, the, the, the mother of the witch and her husband, the, the whole, you know, the kids, the, the boss, she did a spell where they all got in the blackface. So let's go to here. So, so her daughter tried to do a spell. This is bewitched. Her daughter tried to do a spell with blackface, right? And she messed up and she wasn't able to, uh, cause her daughter was trying to make, this was her daughter's friend. She had a black friend and, um, the daughter, her daughter wanted to make, um, her friend white and make her black so they could be sisters. She wanted them to be sisters. So she tried a spell and she messed up the spell, but then her mom was able to fix the spell. So this is when she made her friend white, right? A white cast person. And this is when she became a black cast individual, right? The little girl from the show, right? And then this was the boss. So what happened was there was a dinner party in Bewitched and there's this guy that was racist at the dinner party so um, they were actually trying to be anti-racist with this episode. Um, and the, uh, the witch, I believe, uh, the, the main uh, character, the witch, she tried to, uh, she did a spell on the racist guy so that everybody he saw was black. Even if they were Caucasian or the white cast, he saw them as a, as a black person. So this is through the eyes of this racist guy and everybody he looked at was black. So, so even she was black they made her black all right um and they made her husband black all right so you know they did blackface as well this is blackface even though they were trying to be anti-racist with this and that's why i'm kind of ending it off with this one because this was a, a, a episode that's supposed to be an anti-racism episode but they ended up being racist in the anti-racism episode right you know all right that's it all right and this is uh, another lecture, the future lecture. Netflix will talk about cuties in the future and all that sick stuff, right? So Netflix, a lot of these th things that we showed today all got canceled from Netflix, all right? And and that was actually Netflix apologizing for, for the cutie stuff. But um, yeah, so a, a lot of these blackface things that I showed today, they were actually on Netflix and Netflix took them down. But they didn't take down all the episodes. They just took down the episodes that had the blackface, which is still clearly pro problematic. Right. Because if if it were reversed and, you know, there was anti-Semitic things in a, in a show, they wouldn't even let the whole show stay up. But when it's a black thing and it's anti, you know, black, then, you know, they leave the rest of the show up. All right. So that's it. So, yeah. So. So thanks for uh, listening to this lecture. And uh, there's more lectures to come. You can like and subscribe. Uh, this is TTM Academy. I'm DJ Radon. And and uh, there's going to be more investigations like this. And this is just the beginning of this chart. So that was just the top 100. The top 100 blackface. All right, peace.